OK, I think we're recording. Cool. OK, welcome everybody to our first meeting of Students Council for uh, this governing year. Uh, I will call a council to order at 1032 AM. With a quorum being present. Uh, First is the territorial acknowledgement. The Students Council of the Waterloo Undergraduate Student Association acknowledges that we live and work on the traditional territory of the neutral, Anishinaabeg, and Haudenosaunee peoples. The University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldeman Tract, land promised to the Six Nations, which includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Uh, as we gather electronically in pandemic times uh, from, from all over the world, I encourage members of council to reflect on how colonialism continues to shape the world in which we live in all of our local contexts uh, wherever we find ourselves next we go to election of the officers uh, first is the election of speaker uh, are there any uh, any members of council who wish to run to be speaker of council Hearing none, uh, I will, uh, I guess, retain the office of speaker uh, as the president, and we will move on to the election of a deputy speaker. Are there any nominations for deputy speaker? Cannon? Okay. Uh, so I, I see a nomination for Canon Sharma as deputy speaker. Um, and I, I'll, I'll take Vincent to second the nomination. Um, since uh, I think Canon nominated himself and then Vincent also nominated. Does anybody else wish to run for deputy speaker? Hearing none. Uh, oh, there's a point of order. Sorry, Ben. Don't need a mover and a seconder for the item. Um, on for for the nomination or to go to the uh, elections at all? Elections at all. I don't believe so because it's a privileged motion um, and and the like, council has to do this before we can do anything else. Um, but if you uh, maybe for to be thorough, can I take you to second the, the motion on election of the officers? OK, and I'll, I'll, I will have moved it. Uh, there's a point of inquiry from Vicky. I can't hear Canon very well, but I can hear you a lot better, so it's hard for me to keep on adjusting my sound because. Sorry, I will put my mic down for the to my mouth. Thank you, Canon. Thanks, Vicky. Uh, there is a point of order from Harleen. Maybe a point of inquiry, but uh, just a general question. Uh, do self nominations need um, seconders? I. I don't actually think they they do. I took v Vincent as seconding the nomination, but I don't think you actually need seconds on a nomination um, for for the purpose of elections. Um, but I don't think it will make too much of a difference. Do you wish to to nominate yourself? No, I was just wondering. OK. OK, uh, so seeing no further nominations for deputy speaker, uh, we will uh, take Cannon as uh, acclaimed to that to that office, uh, and we'll vote on all of these as a single motion. Uh, so we'll have Cannon fill in the blank uh, that you see on the agenda. And next, we will move to the election of the speaker on the same item of election of the officers. So, uh, are there any nominations for Secretary of Council? Seeing none, uh, 
that means that uh, our Vice President Operations and Finance, Matthew Schwartz, will uh, fulfill those duties. Uh, I will note for uh, the the members present that uh, our executive assistant, Michael Sametta, is acting as the recording secretary for our meeting. Um, but uh, in in name, the, the secretary is Matthew Schwartz, or will be because nobody has stood election for secretary. And we will move on to assistant secretary. Are there any nominations for assistant secretary? Point of inquiry from Vicky. What uh, would be the job of uh, the assistant to the secretary exactly? Um, so the assistant secretary would work with uh, works with the officers of council to assist in administering, sort of as required. Uh, the the roles of deputy speaker and assistant secretary really depend on the the individuals in the role and uh how they decide to divide work amongst themselves so assistant secretary could uh, help with keeping live minutes of the meeting uh or uh taking recordings any anything to do with the secretarial duties that they're willing to take on the assistant secretary can do does that answer your question yes because i was just wanting more i knew kind of what the secretary did i just forgot what this assistant did. Sure. Thanks, Vicki. Um, so it appears that there are no nominations for assistant secretary, so that role will remain vacant. Oh, sorry, uh, Connor. Uh, we, we can't hear you if you are speaking. Wait, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I, I nominate myself. OK, thank you. So I'll give it a second to see if there are any further nominations. Otherwise, uh, we will have uh, Connor Rettinger uh, fill in the blank for assistant secretary. OK, so we will have that. So the motion will read. Uh, be it resolved that uh, council elects Benjamin Easton as speaker, uh, council elects Canon Sharma as deputy speaker, council elects Matthew Schwartz as secretary, and council elects uh, Connor Rettinger as assistant secretary. Uh, this was moved by myself, seconded by Canon. Does anybody wish to speak to the motion? Okay, seeing no comment. Uh, we will do a vote in uh, uh, reverse order for the sake of expediency because I don't expect this to be controversial. Uh, does anybody, uh, Jay, I see your, your point of privilege. Um, I guess I'll take it before we start voting. Um, Councillor Yuhan Zhang, she didn't receive the meeting link. Could you please email her the meeting link? Uh, can I ask you to to uh, to do that, please, Jay? I apologize. I can copy the meeting link and put it in the chat if you could send that to them because uh, <laughs> I'm uh, a little busy presiding the meeting, but uh, I, I okay, apologize I'll for missing them. Um, the link is in the chat now. Uh, it's the counselors. It's not like a large member. The counselor yep. didn't receive the link. Okay. I, I um, Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Uh, we'll do a, a, a housekeeping item on, on adding people to the to the council mailing list. Um, so I apologize for the confusion. Now uh, we are about to vote on the motion that I had previously read to elect myself as speaker, Canon Deputy Speaker, Matthew Schwartz as secretary and Connor Rattinger as Assistant Secretary. Does anybody oppose the motion? Does anybody wish to abstain? Cannon abstains and he wishes that to be noted. Otherwise, it carries. 
Uh, next, we go to ratification of society and pro tem designates. Um, so the motion reads, be it resolved that the Students Council ratify the appointment of pro tempore and constituency society designates as presented. Be it further resolved that the Students Council ratify the appointment of Mary Cybersma as pro tempore representative for mathematics. Uh, this is a, 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 a privileged motion. Uh, can I have a second? Second. I see Catherine first. Uh, OK, so this is uh, this is this is pretty standard stuff. Uh, the list of, of appointees is at the bottom of the. Um, at the bottom of the agenda package, it's actually the first appendix appendix. Uh, this is uh, obviously we have a number of vacancies. Uh, there remain several for uh, science in particular, so um, I believe Vaishvi is here. Um, you Science Society can appoint. I believe there are four vacancies, so we can follow up about that. Um, uh, and later in the agenda, we'll have uh, an item on by-election dates to fill those vacancies permanently. Uh, but in the meantime, this is the. Uh, here we are. Uh, so does anybody have any questions or wish to speak to the ratification of society and pro tem designates? Seeing none, does anybody oppose the motion as read? Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, this carries unanimously uh, and we have ratified the Society and Pro Tem designates. Uh, next is the approval of the agenda. I will say uh, I, I slightly modified the agenda to include the speaker and uh, 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 Mary as the Pro Tem designate for math. Uh, from between now and the time that I sent the agenda out. Uh, otherwise, the agenda is the same as presented. Um, so this is this motion is assumed. Uh, can I have a second to approve the agenda? Second. Uh, was that Catherine? No, it's Vicky. OK, uh, Vicky, in future, maybe um, uh, if you could just put in chat, that would be easier so we know who uh, but thanks. We'll take Vicky to second. Uh, and Jay, we wish to speak to the approval of the agenda. Um, I would like to strike down my motion, motion 7.4. Um, all of this meeting for the sake of time, as we have more important issues to discuss with. OK. Uh, does. OK, uh, so. 7.4. 7.4, reduction of nominations required for elections. OK, thanks, oh, Jay. So I believe that that has to. Um, so I, I will take you to move an amendment to strike item 7.4 if that is amenable to you. OK, OK, uh, I will. Uh, OK, Canon seconds that motion. Uh, uh, so I think. Uh, it's pretty clear, uh, I guess, uh, uh, why Councillor Land has uh, requested to to remove this from the agenda. Uh, does anybody wish to speak to this um, or have any questions? Vincent? So just to clarify, this would allow the councillor to bring back this motion for a future meeting? Yes. OK, so yeah, I'm fine with this. OK, thank you. Um, OK, so uh, for everybody's clarity, we're about to vote on an amendment to the motion. Uh, so be it further resolved that uh, council strike item 7.4. So uh, having deliberated on that motion, does anybody oppose striking item 7.4? Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, it carries unanimously. Uh, so the motion will read as amended, be it resolved that council approve the agenda as presented, be it further resolved that council strike item 7.4. Uh, 
Uh, this was moved by myself and seconded by uh, Vicky, I believe. Uh, Jay, would you like to speak? Just to confirm, this amend, amend, sorry, amendment is passed, right? I have another yep. issue with the agenda. That's Can correct. I bring it now? Pardon, sorry? I have another issue with the agenda. Okay. Um, I would like to suggest Council to promote motion 7.5 and 7.6 to special orders as these two topics has been um, overly debated, debated on the internet. And some councillors have internet issues, sorry, time zone issues. Some councillors have a vaccine appointment in the afternoon. Um, I think these two motions should be fully discussed as um, we are all here in a few moments. Okay. Uh, so I'll take that as a, a further amendment, uh, be it further resolved that items 7.5 and 7.6 uh, be considered uh, in special orders. Uh, uh does anybody okay uh so does anybody second that motion or did um kenan or catherine were your seconds earlier for this okay uh yuhan uh seconds okay so now uh, we are going to vote on another amendment to the uh, motion on approval of the agenda. Uh, I think it's pretty clear uh, what what uh, Jay hopes to accomplish with this amendment. Um, so uh, does anybody wish to speak to uh, moving items 7.5 and 7.6 to special orders? Uh, to be clear, this this means that we would proceed to them uh, immediately uh, after this item. Um, uh, there's a point of inquiry. Yes, if we're moving to special order, that means the motion we discuss a specific time. Is there a time set or are we just moving it up in the agenda? Uh, I understand it at, you're right that there should be a, a specific time uh i understood uh jay's point to be like we should discuss this immediately uh because of time zone considerations for other members um so i understood it as we would move there immediately after approval of the agenda um there is another point of inquiry or perhaps a response from jay um I saw that special order in section five is after section four reports. Okay, so. I mean, you said that like, uh, if this is a special order, we need to discuss it um, immediately, right? Uh, I, I understood it as that, um, but we can, we can put it, um, perhaps, uh we if it's friendly to you um we can uh move items 7.5 and 7.6 to the first general orders um to be considered first when we arrive there um i would like to move it um after reports after reports okay yes okay um OK, so then we, I guess we can keep the motion as it as it was uh, moved and seconded. Um, there are a few ones here, uh, so I'm not sure if uh, Vincent, I believe you you already had a chance to speak because you asked about. Um, about if we would be able to go back to the elections thing later, uh, so I think that brings us uh, to Catherine. No, 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 th this is a different one. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, so I wanted to say about the moving the agenda around, I think Jay is correct. There's a lot of student interest in this item, and I believe students who wanted to come speak to this item and be in attendance for when we discussed it are expecting that we will discuss the item during the point in the meeting in which we had said we would be discussing the item, and 
So if we move it around, students are going to come and will have like already been in the middle of the discussion or be done discussing the item when they expected us to not be discussing it until later. So I would be against this change because I think students should have reasonable expectations that we'll discuss things when we say we were going to discuss things. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Uh, Jay is next for a speaking turn. Um, if you have anything different to say from what happened in your in your point of inquiry. Uh, this POI is from before. I think Stephanie has another POI. Oh, uh, OK, Steph, go ahead. Hi, I was just wondering, <clears throat> sorry, um, when students sent their request to enter the meeting as at large members uh, to the speaker account, Ben, um, if you specify to them a specific time, um, and I guess this also applies to um, any counselors or whatnot who communicated to students um, that if they want to speak to motion, they should uh, email the speaker um, if they mentioned a particular um, time that they thought that the, the motion, uh, we would be considering that motion. Thanks, Steph. Uh, there's a direct response from Vincent. Yeah, so as for me, well, I didn't give like a specific like time, like hours and minutes. Um, it was the motion is roughly in the middle of our agenda, so I would expect students would come roughly in the middle of the meeting and be surprised if it's suddenly the first thing. Thanks, Vincent. There's a direct response from Jay. Um, I hope several students that um, I will try to move this motion uh, at the first thing we discuss in this meeting. OK, uh, next is Matthew Schwartz. Um, I spoke with a lot of students over the past few days about their concerns and thoughts around this motion, and I told them broadly all that this would be happening later in our agenda if that was something they wanted to tune in on and that they wouldn't have to be here really early to see it. Um, so that kind of conflicts with uh, what students are expecting to see in this item and in this agenda. Thank you, Matthew. Um, OK. So I'm going to end that that direct response response thread. Uh, now we go to uh, Catherine. Um, thanks. Similar to Vincent, uh, I, I think that we should be against this amendment to the motion. Um, Jay presented it as uh, like a courtesy for counselors who wanted to speak to it but might have to leave early. Um, but uh, as our current first order of regular orders, we have committee appointments and. Um, that is uh, just as essential, if not more essential, for all counselors to be present. Um, as well, uh, this does not, um, to me, qualify as something that should be a special order. Um, there is nothing that distinguishes it from other regular orders, except that counselors want to discuss it, which count and counselors should want to discuss all motions. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, Edward, I realize you had a point of inquiry that I missed. I apologize. No, that was covered earlier. Oh, OK. Then uh, then next is uh, Vincent with a a one. Do you have anything new to add that you didn't say in a direct response? I don't have a one. Then I think you're behind in the chat. Next is Steph and Cannon. Uh, well, so, no, I just I read your one from 1048. Uh, so the next one in the chat was Vincent. So then it goes to Steph. Yeah, I just wanted to add on to uh, what Catherine said earlier. Um, a lot of at-large students are also here to speak uh, to their nominations for at-large membership um, of the different committees. Um, so I think keeping that in consideration um, with the amount of at-large students who are currently present, um, that the best course of action would be um, not to rearrange the agenda. Thanks, Steph. Next is Cannon. Cannon withdraws his point. So exa having exhausted the speaking list, we will vote on the amendment to rearrange items 7.5 and 7.6 to special orders to be considered after reports. Uh, for voting on this item, uh, does everybody have access to the raise hand function? I realize this is uh, maybe gonna be complicated. I 
I suggest asking people to raise their hands if they have access to the raise hand function. I, I realize that there are actually there are some people on the phone here, so let's do. Um, uh, <laughs> I apologize. This um, is my first my, my first meeting chairing. Uh, so, so I'm not sure how we usually do this when then, there are like, um, more contentious then, things. Canon. We usually put a comment in there and we ask people to react to the That's comment right. based on three different reactions about how they want to vote on. OK, thank you, Canon. Um, so the, the, uh, I will type in the chat amendment to rearrange. Uh, and uh, for those in favor, thumbs up. For those opposed, heart react. For those abstaining, laugh react. Could you please remind that only voting counselors should vote? Yes, uh, and only voting members of council are to vote on this. Sorry, can um, you repeat the uh, emoji? Yes, thing? thumbs up is in favor of amending. Uh, heart react is opposed. And laugh is uh, laugh is abstaining. People on the phone may have to vote like out loud. OK, it appears that uh, um, the. Uh, it, it appears that the motion will not pass uh, from votes received to present, so the amendment fails. Uh, and we are back to the main motion, uh, which reads, uh, be it resolved that council approve the agenda as presented, be it further resolved that council strike item 7.4. I believe it was 7.4. Uh, so let's vote on this motion. Uh, does anybody oppose approving the agenda as presented? Uh, does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, it carries. We've approved the agenda as amended, striking item 7.4. Next is the approval of the minutes. Uh, there are, are no minutes to approve at this time. Next is items for adoption by consent. Uh, so uh, we have in the consent agenda, uh, the ratification of service coordinators be resolved that the Students Council ratified the service coordinators for spring 2021 as presented. This is moved by by Vice President Dong. Uh, can I hear a second? Canon seconds. Uh, Catherine, would you like to speak to the motion? Unless anybody has any questions, this is standard procedure. Um, and I don't have anything to say to it. Thanks, Catherine. Canon, go ahead. Um, I just had a quick question. So when about a year and a half ago, when we had, at the GM, we passed the motion to start paying service coordinators, one of the reasons was that we'll have higher, more people want to get involved and apply for these positions. But I saw one of the coordinator position is still currently empty. Could you explain what's the reason behind this? And if it, yeah. Thanks, Cannon. Catherine? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just to clarify, the coordinator, coordinator position that is empty um, isn't uh, due to a lack of interest. We currently have coordinators being hired on a rolling basis. Um, so they are eight month terms and they overlap so that each term there's a returning coordinator from the last term and a new coordinator that was hired for that term. Um, and we had a new coordinator hired and the old coordinator um, resigned due to the acceptance of another full-time position. Um, so that's why that position is empty and we're currently in the process of hiring. Um, in terms of the interest in general, um, things have been uh, steady. All the other positions are filled, uh, but I do urge that people keep in mind that we are online right now and that is tough um, for everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, next is Steph. 
Hi. Um, could Catherine just speak to um, how these individuals were selected, uh, just so that we know that they're the best people for the job and not random people that you, like, <laughs> um, handpicked, I guess? Sure, Steph. Uh, thanks. Next, uh, Catherine, if you'd like to respond. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will note that uh, coordinators were hired prior to me taking office, so I did not have part in this. This is just standard procedure for a council to ratify it by council procedure. Um, the hiring process is that uh, the posting is up for a set amount of time. Um, eligible candidates uh, submit their applications and are interviewed by the past coordinators, I believe the price student Vice President Student Life and the Services Manager, um, and they come to a joint decision. Um, the Vice President Student Life does have uh, the final say, but in general, it is a decision by committee um, to choose the most qualified candidate based on experience and uh, other factors. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, seeing no further comment, uh, we will take this to a vote. Does anybody oppose adopting the consent agenda? which uh, is, in this case, just the ratification of service coordinators. Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither carries unanimously. Uh, next, we move to reports. Uh, first is executive reports and my report. Uh, and uh, I uh, ask council uh, a bit of grace. Uh, I have not, I did not have the opportunity to, to prepare a written report. Um, it's been a very busy two weeks and uh, I had to prepare the agenda without a deputy speaker, obviously. Uh, so it was a little, <laughs> that was a bit of a time sink for what is, as you can tell, a hefty agenda. Um, but in general, the first uh, two weeks in office has been uh, a lot of meetings, uh, both with university stakeholders and with uh, uh, WUSA staff. Uh, lots of getting to know people uh, and I guess figuring out uh, who our key contacts will be as we develop our annual plan uh, in the next coming months. Uh, otherwise, there is uh, an item attached on the WUSA box initiative, uh, which was prepared by uh, our director of marketing and communication, marketing communications and outreach. Uh, the WUSA box initiative is something that uh, was done for the first time last year uh, in lieu of uh, orientation kits and uh, other like activities that WUSA usually would carry out in a, in a normal year. Um, uh, our staff approached the board of directors last year and uh, with this proposal as a way to uh, continue to engage students, particularly for first years who uh, otherwise would not really have any interaction with the student association at all. Um, so happy to take any questions on this. Uh, Matthew. Uh, this is less a question, uh, more of something that I wanted to raise for council during your report on this. Um, which is we are planning to, as Ben says, um, rekindle the WUSA box uh, initiative, slightly different than last year, but bring it back to support our students, uh, domestic and international. Um, and well, ordinarily, this would be part of the regular budgeting process. Um, when it comes to things like the WUSA boxes, it's far more effective, cost effective and otherwise, uh, for us to start early. So I want to notify council that it is my intent to, um, as soon as I can to the board, board of directors, I will be bringing a motion to appropriate um, $100,000 um, for this um, program to support our incoming students. Um, and if council has thoughts on that, we'd very much love to hear them. Uh, but this is a bit of notification on that front, just so that we're all in the loop on everything that's going on. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, Vicki has a, uh, a question. Go ahead. It's more so just uh response to Matthew's uh, comments. Um, I'm very glad to hear that because I'm a coordinator for uh, the Waterloo, like Waterloo, like what used to be Central and now it's just Waterloo. 
Um, so I know they weren't sure about if that was going to happen. So I'm sure they will be happy to hear that the Wusa box is coming back for their first years, as that might help us plan for some other things. Yeah, thanks, Vicky. We're still waiting for board approval, um, of course, but uh, very excited to bring it back to support all of our services and all of our students. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, Steph? I just wanted to add additional information that I think counselors should be aware of. Um, so because we're not charging the orientation fee um, for this upcoming semester, um, what, you know, if you were, you're currently, I guess, uh, a third year up, um, you might have gotten some items through um, like, like the university itself that used to kind of be like a joint collaboration um, between faculty endowment funds um, and the university's budget specifically for orientation. But since the university um, is not collecting those funds, um, there's essentially not much other ways to get um, sort of swag items to students um, that you might have been able to experience within your first year. Um, so this is essentially us trying to um, make sure that first year students, despite um, being online, um, are, are still able to get something and feel like they're part of the campus community. Um, it also offers an opportunity um, for um, our uh, the individual WAT teams um, to um, add faculty items um, into the boxes. Um, and we know that's very important to a lot of the traditions that they have, uh, especially with regards to um, the pink ties at mathematics, uh, the bandan and bandan and danas. Did I say that right, Connor? I don't know. Um, for um, environment students. Um, so yeah, we, we see this as, as the best way kind of going forward in order to um, ensure that students have that experience. Thanks, Steph. Uh, next is Harleen. Uh, I had a question because it says that um, obtaining external sponsorship to help fund the project under changes from last year. And I was wondering if someone could speak to what that will entail and how that would impact the who's a box and like things in it. Sure, uh, so uh, we've spoken to our, uh, oh, there's there's a point of inquiry from Connor. Hey, um, so I was just wondering if there would be any communications and participation um, between the faculty endowment funds as well as the um, faculty O teams in this process. Like, will you guys be letting them know about stuff and will they be able to contribute funds and contribute items to these boxes. Because I know last year I was a part of these teams. Um, we didn't really have a lot. We didn't really know about it and it was a very last minute decision. Thanks, Connor. Uh, in future, uh, I would say that, that that kind of a question is more of just like a put a one because points of inquiry are something that it's like interruptible. Uh, so um, I think that it's a sort of similar question uh, to, to Harleen's. Uh, so for external sponsorship, uh, we're look that that means both uh, like corporate sponsorship uh, as well as uh, working with different units on campus from the faculties uh, uh, specifically. Uh, for the corporate sponsors, I believe like uh, from our discussions with uh, Mark, our marketing department, uh, it would be like logos on the back face of the box, and I don't believe there would be any actual content in the boxes from those. Uh, I can't speak specifically, but uh, the uh, hope is to uh, cover a, a significant portion of the costs from external sponsorship. Um, uh, for Connor's question about uh, collaborating with the faculties, the the hope is to have the um, like faculty orientation teams uh, contribute items so that they're sort of customized for for students from different faculties uh, and uh, hopefully that answers your questions. Uh, Canon had a direct response to whom I don't know. Sorry it was to Connor. Connor um, the O teams have already been informed about this 
Um, they are already planning and they have been told about the costs associated with some of these expenses, so they sh should be planning accordingly. Thanks, Cannon. Um, so seeing no further questions, as far as I can tell, on, on uh, my report, uh, we will go to the report of the Vice President Education. Steph? Hi. Um, so very much just, um, I guess, the case for all exec, we're settling into our roles. Um, in particular, um, for me, I've been onboarding my associate vice presidents um, who oversee particular areas of the vice president education portfolio. Um, so my AVP academic um, has contacted the individual um, faculty societies, um, the individuals who occupy sort of um, the VP academic or VP education role um, and responsible for advocacy um, within their particular faculties. Um, so um, I'm hoping this year we can provide a better collaboration and support um, with the faculty societies to basically address things that are going specifically on there. Um, so that's a project that's ongoing. Um, and my AVP is preparing for that. Um, we're also interested in exploring um, limits to academic freedom, um, which has historically been associated um, with some props saying very racist or transphobic things and dismissing it um, as it being in the spirit of academic freedom. Um, there's also cases with um, professors refusing training um, that would increase their ability to teach, but also their awareness of the diversity of you know, students and the different things they experience and their different needs. Um, profs have been sort of saying, no, you can't make me do that. Um, so we're kind of addressing how academic freedom ties into that. Um, also, uh, we've been notified by some counselors about concerns with um, courses, particularly mathematics and science using invasive um, proctor software. Um, so uh, we've contacted um, folks within the administration um, regarding that. Um, and also with regards to third party, um, I guess, textbooks or learning resources, um, they're usually not supposed to be over the cost of uh, $50 or, um, yeah, sorry, not over the cost of $50 and they're not supposed to be um, contributing to like more than a certain percent of the, the point. Um, so we've been seeing a lot of students concerned about um, very expensive um, kind of third party software that doesn't add any educational value being used. Um, so we're um, going to act on that. Um, in relation to co-op um, council meeting, we've invited a representative um, from uh, work integrated learning um, to kind of discuss PD um, following up with the um, fuck PD motion um, that was presented to council um, last term by Councillor Macri. Um, and then I guess on the external advocacy front, um, WUSA is part of UPRU, um, a federal advocacy body, and USA, a provincial advocacy body. Um, we are still very much just um, we still have to do elections um, within the federal advocacy body, um, but during our first meeting, we discussed um, our plan to basically prioritize international student advocacy um, because we're seeing a lot of gaps there, um, especially with regards to um, news reports from two weeks ago that the province specifically asked the uh, the federal government to um, bar international students um, from entry. Um, there's there was a little communication discommunication between the the province and the the, uh, the feds regarding this, um, but we're still very much concerned about um, the fact that they seem to be blaming international students for all the COVID cases uh, that we have, which uh, evidence shows that they are not the major contributors. Um, so we really want to make sure that in any safety measures that are going forward, that um, you know we're not 
unfairly placing blame and contributing to even worse circumstances for international students. Um, and then on the uh, provincial advocacy front, um, Steph, where- sorry, I'm going to cut you off uh, because the oral report's not supposed to last more than two minutes. Um, okay. So I apologize for not saying that before you started, but uh, it's, uh, Vicky has a question for you. Hi, Steph. I sent you an email yesterday to the VP, uh, not yesterday, last week in the training session for the VP Ed uh, email saying how, like, how Redis is currently, well, we don't have any sort of academic or education. And also, Redis is like RASC is kind of on like <laughs> hiatus right now. So I didn't, wasn't sure if you got it or not because I volunteered for the one committee for that. Um. Yeah, for that specific committee, um, I guess it's a little bit different for the, the university colleges, some of them, because you do have specific academic programs. Um, our hopes is that the um, the ASU um, representative would be able to kind of um, address some of the concerns that are happening within Brennison. Um, but if there's not communication uh, there that happens regularly, um, we can further discuss about um, having you um, on that kind of unofficial working group. Um, if you can just touch base with me um, outside of council and we can kind of discuss that further. Sure, sounds good. Thanks, Vicky. And I, I saw Vincent had a direct response, uh, so I should have taken that first. Uh, so go ahead, Vincent. Um, so first, I'd just like to correct something. I think Stephanie said that the, the fuck PD motion that was discussed at the general meeting was my motion. It was not my motion. It was submitted by an at-large student. I just spoke in favor of the motion during the meeting, but it was not my motion. Um, and as for the uh, proctoring, if after the meeting, I would appreciate if Steph could follow up with me on some of the details of what she's been doing there um, because I've been doing a lot of work on that and I'd like to um, be in the loop of what's going on there. Thanks, Vincent. Uh, um, Steph, you have a response here. Yeah, definitely for sure. And my apologies, Vincent, uh, for citing you as uh, the mover of that motion. That's That was my bad. Thanks, Steph. Uh, next is Rebecca. Hi, um, I just had a question regarding your mention of textbooks and like the guidelines surrounding that. I was wondering if there's any guidelines for those e-textbooks that have an expiration date also, like specifically referring to that, especially because it's not something that's resellable. So you can't really make any money back off of it. Um. So we've been seeing this become a lot more prominent within recent years. Um, to my knowledge, the university and uh, WUSA does not have a particular advocacy stance on this. Um, given the fact that we are moving towards more um, online textbooks um, and that they aren't resellable, um, it's definitely a conversation that I plan on striking up uh, with the administration and also talking uh, within um, the, uh, Education Advisory Committee um, about um, creating uh, an advocacy policy around. Um, so there's not currently anything on that front, but I am aware of it and that we are going to um, take action on that. And if you have any feedback um, or any specific courses that you feel are kind of, um, I guess, abusing that, if you can shoot me an email, um, that would be very much appreciated. Thanks, Steph. Uh, so it looks like there are no further uh, questions for the VP Ed report. So we will go to the report of the Vice President Operations and Finance. Uh, Matthew, if you can keep it under two minutes and then we'll have a question period. All right, don't worry, I'll talk really, really fast. <laughs> um, so yes, um, broadly, my first two weeks have been very similar to the other execs, which has been a lot of meetings and a lot of um, great stakeholder relations stuff that I've really enjoyed and getting to know the different people that we're going to be working with over the next year. Um, but there are a couple um, important highlights that I like to bring up um, on stuff that I focused on and stuff that has been done. Um, so um, one of the big things uh, that we are getting ready for and that I've been involved in is taking a look at what UPASS is going to like look like in the fall. And this is something I really want to flag for council. Um, we are currently working toward um, a deal with the GRT 
whereby UPASS will be assessed to students in the fall and they'll have access to their bus passes. But if they don't reside in Waterloo Region um, and thus aren't able to take advantage of the service, um, they can opt out refund that fee. Um, so we get to target this support to the students that need it and we don't have to supply the students that won't be able to use it. So that'll be a great thing to see once students are on campus quite a bit more. Um, it's been a very busy two weeks. Other than that, as I said, lots of meetings. I've been in lots of meetings with students and counselors, actually, especially uh, gathering feedback as to what people think about different things that WUSA is planning on this agenda even. Um, so I'll get into some of that a little bit later, but uh, a lot of very exciting stuff in the pipeline. Thanks, Matthew. Connor has a question. Um, relating to the UPASS, I was just wondering how would it work for students that say are taking one or two courses that are maybe say living in Guelph, they're taking a, a GO train to Kitchener GO and then still commuting using the ION. Would they still be able to use stuff like that, like the UPASS, or would they still need to like purchase um, one of their transit cards? Um, there's a short answer and a long answer to that. The short answer is they will still need to purchase transit cards. Um, and the reason for that is, and this is something we've been working on, um, but we have to negotiate with GRT externally. They are external body that are out here looking to make profit on their operations and fund their operations. And we've been trying to push GRT on int introducing the UPASS for part-time students for quite a while. And it's something that I'm pretty confident that we can make progress on in the next year. That's one of my priorities this is to collect the data to prove to GRT that there's a business case for it and that it makes sense. Um, so that's one of my priorities and something I'm very excited to work on. But as it stands, GRT refuses to budge on the issue of part-time students. OK, thank you. Thanks both. Uh, Cannon has a question. Hi, Matthew. So Hello. you mentioned that um, for the fall term, you hope that we will be able to let people kind of opt out of you pass if they're not living in Waterloo. Yeah. Um, so this was something that was brought up throughout the entirety of last year that if it's possible or not, and every time it was brought up, then exact uh, said that the GRT is not going, willing to do that. So like what has changed now that they're willing to do that now? What's changed? is the GRT wants to get back to normal. Previously, they did not want to do this with us um, for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, they're out here trying to make money and they thought that they made more money off of people that um, were using the regular bus fares and they would off, off um, assessing a UPASS to the minuscule amount of students here in Waterloo. But now that a bunch of students are coming back, they feel there's a business case for it and that's why they're willing to work with us on it. The other concern that has changed is um, the weight and the difficulty of administering that. Um, because what the GRT is going to require is some amount of proof that you are not living in Waterloo Region. That could be like a phone bill to an address outside of Waterloo Region or maybe a lease agreement or something. So it's not going to be difficult for students, but the difficulty of administering that for 40,000 students is huge. Um, so it's been working over the last year to um, try and refine that process and figure out how we can handle that, how we can assist with that. And that's been trialed successfully with the Graduate Students Association. Um, and that's why there's the confidence to move forward now where there just wasn't before. It wasn't a fair of the execs, it was um, circumstance and sort of what the world looked like. Thank you. Also, I just want to clarify, nowhere was I implying the execs field. I was just wondering how we were able to actually advocate to GRT about this. Yeah, absolutely. This has just been the result of a lot of negotiations and us saying this is what we want and really trying to push for it and make the business case for it and prove why it makes sense for students and for GRT. Thanks both. Vincent has a direct response. Uh, so yeah, just to uh, clarify, you said that you, said, you mentioned how the Graduate Student Association is, is um, able to do this now. Could you speak a little bit to why they're able to do this now and we aren't able to do this just yet? Um, the Graduate Student Association is far, far smaller than we are, which is why GRT and they, to be honest with you, were comfortable tri trialing this. Um, the GRT was not comfortable trying this because of the, the amount of work that it would have done to process what would have been like 40,000 opt outs. Um, but when it comes to graduate students, not only do I think I think a, a higher percentage of them are going to be around in this area because of um, their research commitments um, and us, you know, more more people around here, um, but it's just a much smaller body of students um, so that JRT could use this as a case to see, hey, does this work? Does this process work or is, is this too hard? Um, so the reason is really one of size. Thanks both. Uh, seeing no further questions 
for the Vice President Operations and Finance. Uh, we will move to our Vice President Student Life. Uh, Catherine, you have two minutes. Uh, yeah, similar to the rest of my exact team, I do not have a written report. Um, there's very little to report. It's been a busy two weeks. Um, I've been in meetings with stakeholders and my staff uh, within Musa to work out our goals and plans for the year. Um, I've been in some meetings uh, regarding the development of uh, the university's equity data collection survey, um, which they have plans to roll out uh, soon this term. Um, so uh, myself, along with service coordinators and other student consultation members um, have been working to develop that. Uh, and besides that, I'm not sure I have anything else to report, uh, but I'm very happy to take any questions. Thanks, Catherine. I'll add for Council's information on the Equity Data Advisory Group. Um, they uh, are interested in coming to Council to present a report on their findings or, or their work so far. I should say not their findings. I don't, I don't think they've done the survey yet. Uh, so I guess stay tuned for June where it's likely we'll have a delegation uh, from that, that committee of the university on their work. Vicky? Uh, when you talk about equity, does that just like also include accessibility needs like for like, so I know like I'm going to be later talking about the accessibility report or is it like other equity uh, problems at the university? Um, I have only just gotten access to um, a confidential draft of the survey uh, and so I haven't been able to review it in full yet. Um, I do know that uh, there are multiple facets of um, equity and uh, identities that are um, covered in the survey and that this is a first step and the university has full intentions to uh, take what they can from the survey but use it to inform um, further uh, surveys and data collection to fill in any gaps that they missed this time. Thanks Vicki and Catherine. Uh, are there any other questions for the Vice President Student Life? Seeing none, we will move on to the report of the Board of Directors. Uh, Can everybody hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I didn't submit a written report just because um, I guess to echo what everyone else is saying, it's been a really busy uh, couple of weeks and also um, taking some time to kind of decompress after the last year. Um, so I put together an oral report that I have uh, written up that I'll submit for the June meeting um, as a formal report. Um, to summarize the activities of the board over the last couple of weeks, um, training took place on May 1st um, and continued on May 8th and 9th with uh, the Students Council. Uh, we had our first special meeting on May 3rd where we elected officers and uh, committee appointments um, and we also approved at the governance committee of the board. Um, we have a special meeting scheduled for tomorrow evening to uh, discuss uh, the results and have some more conversations about the discussions that will take place today about the Lusa Box initiative um, and make final approvals. Uh, we have our first regular meeting scheduled for May 27th at 6 p.m. Um, and as I mentioned, I will be submitting a formal report uh, to the June meeting um, outlining this work. Um, for the May 3rd special meeting, all directors were present. I am happy to take questions. Thanks, Abby. Um, are there any questions for the chair of the board? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to representative reports. Uh, first is uh, the Applied Health Sciences Caucus, which is actually erroneous. Uh, that ought to be changed. Uh, so obviously it's the Faculty of Health. Um, I received a uh, notice from uh, Councillor uh, Marie Jolikarbekatka that she will be arriving late, uh, and I don't think she's here yet, uh, but she said there is nothing to report for AHS. Um, there is a vacancy for the health caucus, so if there is an awesome rep here, um, uh, 
FYI, you can appoint somebody to fill a vacancy uh, until the by-election, uh, which we approve later in this meeting. Uh, next is Arts. Hi, everyone. Um, pretty much Arts is trying to get access again to our social media accounts. We created one last year and never really got around to building it up to the to the extent that we wanted to. So we're trying to get that login information and build up our social media following. And that's pretty much it for now. Thanks. Can I ask who, who that was speaking? Rebecca, sorry. That's OK. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, any questions for Arts? Seeing none, we'll move to uh, we will move to Engineering Caucus. Uh, sure. So not too much has changed. Um, the Engineering Society is still continuing to run events in an online term. We just switched societies again, so we are back on ASOC, I think. So that's exciting. Um, we're reaching out to students through the Engineering Society Discord. Um, we recently gotten a new voice channel set up just for WUSA counselors there, so hopefully that's something we can use more throughout the next year to get feedback from students and run things perhaps like office hours. Um, we're still hashing out the details, still early stages, but um, we're finding alternative ways to engage with students in the online environment. Thanks, Edward. Are there any questions for engineering? Hearing none, we will move to environment. Uh, environment has nothing to, new to report. Thanks, Connor. Uh, uh, next is mathematics. I have something to report. Go okay, go ahead, Vincent. Um, math, math, me and I assume all of mathematics caucus received a lot, so many emails on. Um, Seven point motion seven point five ratification of the new of new WUSA fee model. Um, I was going through them this morning, and I think the count I currently have is I received seven emails against the motion, firmly against the motion. Twelve emails firmly in favor. One email softly in favor, and one email in favor of a referendum on the matter. Thanks, Vincent. Uh, Ken, did you have anything you wanted to, to add? I was just going to add um, the Faculty of Math is currently working on reviewing their strategic plan, which which was made in 2018 and what progress they have made. Currently, we're making some new proposals in terms of EDI and our hiring for staff and faculty and making sure that that's something we're looking into going in the future. That's all I have. Thanks, Ken. Are there any questions for mathematics? Hearing none, we will move to science. Hi, um, science currently has nothing new to report. Thanks. Um, I'll, I'll say, uh, I guess once again, there are a, a number of vacancies in science, so. Uh, if SciSoc has any students who are interested in, in being counselors for uh, June and potentially the July meetings, depending on when we schedule it, uh, uh, there are lots of lots of seats up for grabs. So I encourage uh, uh, encourage you to reach out to me with names uh, and we can get them ratified at the next meeting. Uh, next is Cambridge. Is there a representative from Cambridge present? Hi, this is Jason from Cambridge. Um, we don't have anything to update. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Uh, next is Kitchener. Is there a representative from Kitchener? Ben, I don't think there's anyone elected for that. OK, I think there is the SOFS president. But um, there is a vacancy for the representative. That's true. Um, uh, but hearing none, we will move on to uh, report of the Stratford campus. 
Uh, sorry, uh, Ben, just to interject here before we move on. Uh, this is Anga, the SAS president speaking. Um, so for, for the Kitchener one, uh, this is obviously one of my first meetings, uh, part of the, you know, the Big Usa Council. Um, just wanted to get a quick clarification as to kind of what goes in to the, uh, into the Kitchener nomination. And if it should be somebody, for example, from, you know, Kitchener, like the pharmacy campus, or if it could really be anyone. Uh, yeah, so uh, each, uh, the Kitchener campus is entitled to a representative like a, a counselor plus a representative from from SOFs, so uh, yourself. Uh, so until there is a by-election, uh, there's a vacant seat. You as the president of SOFs or it, or I guess any internal decision making process that SOFs has uh, can determine who can fill that vacancy. Uh, if you send me an email to speaker at wusa.ca with the name of the individual, we will uh, put it on the next agenda to ratify that appointment. Um, and maybe uh, you can tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, you should run in a by-election too. Um, so we can uh, get lots of engagement at our, uh, in our student government. Uh, Great. That clarify for you? Yeah, that sounds good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so next is Stratford. Is there a representative from Stratford? Hearing none, uh, we will move on to uh, the uh, report of St. Jerome's. Hi, um, so St. Jerome's is onboarding two new members to the Students Union. Um, they successfully held the um, uh, eighth annual Green and Gold Gala on May 7th with 60 attendees to award um, continuing and graduate student awards. Um, and they're in the process of planning their next term. Thank you. Thanks. And th this was uh, Ava, to be clear? Yes. Thanks. Uh, so next, or finally, is uh, Renaissance. Hello, everyone. It's Vicky. Um, there's not too much to report, except I know uh, due to a concern I brought up personally, um, the Renis for SES at least they're going to do some sort of uh, like inclusivity and accessibility training for all profs, but that's all I have to report. Thanks, Vicky. Are there any questions for for Renison's report? Hearing none, we will move to officers of council reports. Uh, so first is uh, the speaker's report, and I do have something here. Um, these are sort of a, a couple of housekeeping rules, which I understand we're doing kind of late into the meeting, but I didn't see a more opportune time. And uh, as we have at large members rolling in, I guess this would be a good time to go over them. So some meeting etiquette. Uh, council is a professional setting. Uh, so especially for uh, the executives and, and Michael, like this, we're at work. Uh, so treat the assembly, its members and guests with respect. Uh, this means always acting in good faith and assuming that everybody wants the best outcome for students. That's why we're here. Uh, and no use of abusive language towards others. This includes threats or cursing. Um, again, this is a professional setting. Uh, next is chat stuff. Uh, so the chat is only to be used for the following purposes. Uh, requests for speaking turns by entering one. Uh, requests for direct responses by entering two raising points of order, privilege, or inquiry by entering POO, POP, or POI, uh, and for officers to pass information. Uh, Vincent has a point of order, speaking of which. Um, there are currently being sent a lot of messages in chat about committee nominations. We mm -hmm. are not currently accepting committee nominations until a bit later in the meeting. Yes, that's correct, Vincent. I, I and I did reply to uh, some messages for, from earlier, so I, I guess I violated my own rules that I'm presenting here. But um, I guess it, the ideal outcome, or I, I guess like the the way, the reason that we have restrictions on the use of the chat is because it can get out of hand quite quickly. Or guidelines, yes, Vincent, that's better language. Um, uh, the the chat can get quite out of hand if there are you know particularly contentious items on the agenda and lots of at large members are present. Uh, so I want to present these these uh, this sort of etiquette uh, early so that it's it doesn't appear like I'm trying to shut people down uh, when they're trying to engage. Uh, 
it's, I guess, important to present this early. Um, I may bring this forward at a future meeting uh, and maybe a bit more fleshed out for a code of conduct for us to adopt uh, this year. Uh, for now, this is sort of just information. Um, uh, but for the at-large members present who are wondering, like, how am I supposed to engage with the meeting if if I can't use the chat, the ideal way is to to reach out to your constituent counselors early uh, and, and communicate with them. Like, it's their job to communicate with you and uh, to to sort of guide you with how to engage uh, as kind of experts in how WUSA does things. Um, so I guess be aware of that in future. And um, uh, and a final thing is violating these rules may result in your removal from meetings. Obviously, this is like a, a last step, but uh, if, you know, if if people are repeatedly breaking rules, uh, the officers reserve this right to, to maintain order in the meeting. Uh, next is an item on speaking rights. That I've seen a little bit of confusion, perhaps, um, from at-large members contacting about their ability to speak at the meeting, uh, of which there are several present currently who wish to speak to items. So each, uh, for speaking rights in general, each member of council is entitled to four turns of debate on each motion. The first turn may be no longer than four minutes and any subsequent turn may be no longer than two minutes each. Uh, now, the next point, uh, and this is from council procedure, uh, members at large are permitted to debate on a motion or participate in discussion upon recognition by the speaker or the yielding of time by a member of council. Um, and I am, I am inclined to use the latter um, because again, it's it's the job of councillors to to work with their constituents, and uh, if if a particular constituent, you know, is well placed to speak to an item, uh, uh, and they reach out to a councillor, that should be good. Uh, there's a point of inquiry from Ken. Sorry, I just want to clarify that for everyone in the meeting that do dark responses count? I'm assuming as a second turn, which is a two minute long thing. Yes, that is my understanding because a, a, a direct response is a subsequent speaking turn. Um, so I, I just want to clarify that. Yeah, my understanding is yes. Uh, and then Vincent. Um, sorry about the participating in the meetings. My understanding is our bylaws and the Corporations Act give all members the right to participate in the discussions at meetings. So the speaker should recognize their right to speak. Uh, yes. So this is this is I think a, a bit of a point of uh, misunderstanding. If um, if you'll uh, allow me to to pull up the bylaws because I have uh, this has sort of come up before. Um, so I, I think the article that you're referring to specifically is students council shall be considered a meeting of delegates. Uh, subject to like the Corporations Act, um, which is true. This article is about empowering to uh, empowering council to act as a meeting of delegates in particular circumstances. And for clarity, a, a meeting of delegates is basically a general meeting. It has the powers of a general meeting. So that would be to accept the auditor's report, uh, to elect the board of directors, to bind the corporation, like the, the the students council or the board of directors, to act in a particular way, to call referenda, any powers that the general meeting has in in these bylaws, can be done at a delegated at a meeting of delegates. So the this clause of the bylaws empowers council to do this, and at a meeting of delegates, according to the act, every member of the corporation has speaking rights, not just to be sponsored. Like you have equal rights to a councillor. However, not every meeting of students council is a meeting of delegates. Students council only constitutes as a meeting of delegates under very specific circumstances where the uh, where the the uh, the notice requirements of the general meeting clause or uh, the general meeting article of the bylaws are followed. So the board of directors sets the agenda. There are very strict notice requirements. Um, uh, there are items for member proposals, and 
in those meetings of delegates, council is is given extraordinary powers that it does not have in a regular meeting like this meeting. So members don't automatically have speaking rights at a regular meeting of council, only through recognition by the speaker or by uh, or by sponsorship of a member of council. Um, so any member that wants to speak at, at a meeting of, of students council at any point in the year, it is extremely unusual that they would not be afforded that right. But it, I think it's important to remember that council is a representative assembly and it's the job of you as counselors to speak for to speak for your constituents because not every constituent can come to a meeting. Um, so I hope that that clarifies your your question, Vincent. Thanks for response to your question. Um, yeah, and I apologize for getting into <laughs> legalese there. Uh, I try to avoid that, but. Um, uh, are there any uh, further questions for for the report of the speaker? OK, uh, Matthew, do you have a report as secretary or or perhaps Mike? Well, I've been working hard for the past uh, 12 minutes, so uh, um, I don't know if Mike has anything to say as recording secretary. All good here. OK, thanks. Okay. OK, so that brings us to uh, unless there are any questions for the report of the secretary, um, but I will assume not. Uh, that brings us to the standing committee or commission reports, uh, which we have the report of the Student Accessibility Commission. Uh, be it resolved that the Students Council accept the WUSA accessibility report as presented. Uh, this is uh, submitted by Vice President Yi Mo, who I will take as the mover. Uh, can I hear a second for the motion? Canon seconds. I, okay, I, I see Vicky seconds, and I will recognize her second as uh, somebody who worked on very hard on this. Uh, so, uh, Steph, would you like to speak as the mover? Yeah. Um, so, this is sort of a project um, that uh, Council Kick started sometime last year um, after recognizing um, a number of ongoing. Um, complaints from students regarding um, accessibility on campus, specifically how um, well the accessibility office was able to support them. Um, as it stands, they are both um, the folks who are designated to support students with disabilities, but simultaneously, uh, I guess, the gatekeepers of um, sort of accommodations. And historically, there's been um, a lot of students feeling as if they were sort of um, left in the dust or with no recourse. Um, but I guess in order to understand how to do advocacy around this and recognize some of the systemic issues, um, we needed kind of further research, um, which is sort of what this provides. Um, the recommendations, at least in terms of, um, I guess, targeted actions, um, addressing specific policies or um, ways that the I guess like that, that is still something that further work will um, be done on. This is basically a preliminary report, just getting um, the different experiences um, of students um, and compiling that. Um, so yeah, um, in accepting this report, you'd basically give um, myself and um, other folks um, the opportunity to kind of continue uh, work on this front. Um, it's a very well written report um, and I will let Vicky as someone who is intimately involved in kind of its creation um, speak a little bit more to it. Thanks Steph. Uh, Vicky, if you'd like to speak, go ahead. Hello everyone. So I uh, I also have like a presentation that I'm not going to share right now, but I will give to Ben to share or Stacy, whoever to share on the website. So if you're more of a visual person and like see pretty splices, it'll be there. It kind of highlights all the report. Uh, I have had a lot of discussions with especially Jennifer Gillies, who's the director of accessibility services about lots of concerns that I even outside of my role as a person who um, 
ha who is disabled and access accessibility issues. Um, and I have seen quite a bit of progress from her since she says she's employing, I think, four contract um, contract advisors for like uh, mental health related um, issues or just like people who for students who really suffer from mental health and need more of that support. So I assume they'd probably be either psychotherapists or MSWs or something in that nature. So it's being so worked on. And I know um, Jennifer Gillies does want someone who would regularly communicate with her about what's going on with USA and what they're hearing. Um, as I, it seems like before I came in, there's the only time there was before that was with Seneca um, and how they would have like weekly uh by weekly by monthly meetings to discuss things such as the grt you pass for part-time students but other than that i don't have too much of the report except anything that's in the report or the slideshow that i afford um i'm open to any questions thanks vicky uh edward go ahead yeah i just want to commend everyone who's been involved with this report i think it's an excellently written report it's very focused and centered in data, but also highly student centric and put students voices at the forefront of this report. So I think it's a very excellent resource to have. I would recommend passing it on to any profs or stu staff, you know, who are vocally good student advocates so that we can get more traction on this kind of throughout the university as well. So I'm planning on sending this to some people I know within the university so that they can take their eyes on it and Kind of see straight hand from students what the experience with accessibility has been. Thanks, Edward. Uh, next is Vincent. Uh, yeah, so uh, in all honesty, I've been overwhelmed with emails about uh, 7.5, and so I only had time to skim through this. Uh, so apologies if this was addressed in the report, but um, does this report, you know, much anything. So one of the things that is important to me on accessibility is I think the current requirements for documentation required to get you know certain accommodations is in some cases extremely onerous. Does this report do anything to address that? Vicky, go ahead. Um, yes, it does, because that was a lot of the feedback I received from a lot of the focus groups I held and also just the survey I put out um, at the beginning, uh, like end of uh, fall and beginning of winter and it's been it's so actively being worked on I am in communications with um, Jennifer a lot and they're trying to Jennifer did see like that barrier and stuff when I brought it towards her and she's actively trying to kind of make it an easier process it might take time because things like this tend to take time but it is ex like it's always being worked on and I'm always trying to help uh, increase like the use of the service and it's like barriers to get access. Thanks, Vicky. Steph? Uh, yeah, I believe that there are um, dedicated sections related to this um, and only uh, sort of the submission of documents, but also instances where accessibility has um, lost documents and require their resubmission. Um, sort of questions around, well, if a student has a long-term disability um, with regards to the requirement um, for some disabilities um, to get um, documents remade um, every year, and that can be quite costly and quite onerous on students. Um, so uh, at least personally, I think that we did a really thorough job in sort of um, addressing all the ways in which documentation can be an absolute nightmare uh, for folks who are registering with disabilities. Um, with accessibility. Thanks, Steph. Uh, we've exhausted the speaking uh, list for this item, so we will take it to a vote. Does anybody oppose the resolution, uh, be it resolved that the Students' Council accept the WUSA Accessibility Report as presented? Does anybody oppose? Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, that carries unanimously. Congratulations uh, to all those who have worked very hard on this. Uh, um, you should be proud of yourselves. Uh, and Vicky would like to be noted in favor. Yay, good job. This is good vibes. Uh, okay, next, uh, special orders. There are no special orders. 
Uh, next is business arising from the minutes. The Waterloo Housing Report. Uh, this item was considered by Council in April 2021 and tabled to this governing year. Whereas student leaders in the Vice President Education portfolio have carried out extensive primary and secondary research on housing in Waterloo, and whereas future student leaders in the Vice President Education portfolio will continue housing advocacy based on the findings of the report, then be it resolved that the Students Council adopt the LUSA Housing Report as presented. Uh, this is submitted by Vice President Yi Mo, who I will take as the mover. Can I hear a second? Vicky seconds. Uh, Steph, would you like to speak to the report? Hi, I hope you all read it this time. Um, it was quite a packed agenda from, uh, I guess, the, the end of the governing year last um, term. Uh, so that's the reason why it's kind of popping up again here. Um, again, this report kind of arises um, from a lot of student uh, complaints and observations around uh, their relationship uh, with landlords and with housing companies. Um, a lot of students, at large students, um, approached council, I believe, two years ago, um, asking for more work to kind of be done here. And like with this research, um, I believe it leaves the uh, the education portfolio um, well posed to take action on this. I know quite a few um, committees within the city are interested in kind of hearing our recommendations and the findings of our research. Um, so the adoption of this report would enable us to sort of do work around here. Um, also, the adoption of this report would enable me to um, allow um, our AVP government affairs, who will be specializing in sort of multinational issues, um, to begin sort of working on some of the recommendations, um, a huge one of which will be sort of um, working with different stakeholders to communicate to students their, their various rights and various recourses, um, as well as addressing some of the issues um, with, you know, students really having the, um, I guess, the, the, the teeth to hold um, landlords and whatnot accountable, especially when we're moving back into um, sort of the region um, as COVID restrictions begin lifting. Um, we foresee this as being, uh, you know, a major concern. Um, so adopting this report would enable all that work to happen. Thanks, Steph. Uh, Francis? Hi, I think you've done yeah, some really great work here, Steph. Um, it, did, it does look really good. Um, I just wanted to know, this is really trivial, I guess, but I wanted to maybe bring attention to like 1.2, the subtitle. It reads Provincial of Ontario. Um, and I'm just wondering if you're missing like government there as a term. Um, I'll admit I was I was not really involved in the the creation of this report um, that sort of belonged to um, Matthew in town um, as well as um, Maruki and I believe Jaskarin as well probably worked on this um, so I can't actually answer questions specific to that. Um, I don't know if Jeff Grant has any memory of this. Okay, yeah, no worries. I, 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 yeah, just a housekeeping thing, I guess. Uh, Jasper, did you want to uh, comment at all or? Oh, um, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, I guess that was just a, like a clerical error. Um, that could be, you know, altered. Thanks, Jasper. And yeah, I think uh, Steph can follow up with our uh, our research team to uh, fix some typo stuff. Uh, so next is Vincent. Hi, I want to ask um, on the matter of allowing housing companies to advertise on campus, some of which are known to be, for lack of a better word, predatory companies. Does this report give any concrete recommendations on if WUSA should continue allowing these companies to advertise on campus? If so, does it recommend a total ban on housing companies advertising at WUSA events, a blacklist of known bad companies, a whitelist of known good companies, or some sort of criteria that a company would need to meet before they're allowed to advertise at WUSA events or anything else along those lines? I didn't see it clearly spelled out in the report, although there was a section on it. Um, 
I believe, um, Matthew, can you speak to this a little bit? Um, Because I know that we've had conversations previously um, with housing companies um, advertising within the the SLC. Um, Yes, very happy to speak to this, if that's all right, uh, Ben. Of course. Thank you so much. Um, So yes, this has been sort of an ongoing issue in the past. Um, where at some of our Welcome Week events or at other spaces, um, housing companies would be advertising. Um, and that was just part of the attempt to be able to offset the cost of those events. But that's very clearly on my radar as something that is uh, really not acceptable for a student organization. We are here for student interests, and those are our primary chief and only concerns. Um, so um, if it isn't already um, uh, an internal focus, which I believe it became after um, the last time this was an issue, um, that is uh, something that I am looking at uh, solidifying and making clear that that's not going to be allowed to have these companies that are predatory, um, don't necessarily even follow the law um, in their relationships with our students. Thanks, Matthew. Oh, yep, go ahead. Oh, um, yeah, I just want to add, um, one way um, before the housing report was adopted, I guess, um, I found this funny, is how we dealt with this strategy. It, um, we had the, the student legal services um, table very close to um, an event that was partially sponsored by a, um, Accommodate, um, which I don't know, I found kind of funny. Um, I guess it's one strategy to sort of address it where um, you know, you have these folks sponsoring things, um, but we also have, you know, an awareness um, around why they not, why they may not be so great. Um, again, there's their own problems with that, but I think Matthew and I, um, as events and whatnot start beginning to come back on campus, uh, we'll be having more discussions around uh, that, and we'll likely bring it to council um, or for our bodies to figure out, I guess, what circumstances we're going to allow it and what circumstances we're not going to. Thanks, Steph. Uh, Edward had a direct response. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. I know that when that first came to light back in 2019, Wusa issued a statement about that. And I, yeah, I, I think, I think uh, Steph's covered most of what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Edward. Uh, Vincent again. Uh, yeah, so just to get clarity, so you're saying that we're for going forward, we're probably not going to allow, you know, like predatory companies, companies that are known to mistreat students to advertise at our events, but we might leave the door open for companies that are known to respect students' rights to advertise at our events. Is that correct? Um, yes, WUSA has no agenda. We, 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 we don't hate rental companies. We hate companies that interact poorly with students. Um, when we pull up, there are some really good housing companies in our area, and I, I have a huge amount of respect for them, and I know who they are because uh, we're plugged in very well to students' experiences. And if those companies approach us and that's some a relationship they want to engage in, I am more than happy. I would love to have those positive relationships. That sounds good to me. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Steph has a direct response. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to tack on that, um, I guess, for the sake of having like um, a blacklist or a whitelist, um, we're going to have to, at least some of the ways in which that could potentially manifest itself. Um, like, so we're not usually allowed to specifically mention uh, housing companies um, by name as, you know, bad to students or whatnot, because then it's considered like libel. Um, but we have to be very careful around that. Um, that's just one constraint that I can kind of see. Um, that said, with regards to who we accept as sponsors, um, who we allow to sort of advertise um, around SLC, um, uh, you know, policies and whatnot um, could be built around that. And that's a conversation that um, Matthew and I will be having uh, going into the future. Thanks, Steph. Uh, so seeing no further uh, questions on this motion, uh, I will read it again and then we'll take it to a vote. Whereas student leaders in the vice president education portfolio have carried out extensive primary and secondary research on housing in Waterloo. And whereas future student leaders in the vice president education portfolio will continue housing advocacy based on the findings of the report. 
Then be it resolved that the Students Council adopt the WUSA housing report as presented, which was moved by Vice President Nemo, seconded by Vicky. Uh, so does anybody oppose the motion? Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, it carries unanimously. Congratulations to another uh, job well done to those present who worked on, on this report. It's some very good stuff. Uh, next is a discussion item on a response to the UW Responsible Investment Working Group uh, to consider a response to the draft report of that group. Uh, this was submitted by uh, Councillor Holland. Uh, can we have a second to uh, to open discussion on this item? Jasper in seconds. Uh, Francis, would you like to speak to the item? And would you like me to pull up the report at all? Or? Um, yeah, I guess that could be helpful. I don't, I'm not going to reference, I mean, I'll just generally reference it, I guess, but it would be good to, yeah, just show where it is. Um, so yeah, this report was, you know, uh, put together by the Responsible Investing Advisory Group um, and sent to me as like a, a part of WUSA because we had as a association expressed interest in their work um, and uh, like where they're progressing with it, um, with what they have termed decarbonization and we have referred to as divestment previously. Um, and uh, so they drafted this report, I think, on Monday. They will send to me on Monday, and it's supposed to have comment. Like, if anyone has any comments, um, it's that those are to be received by tomorrow. Um, so I know it's a bit of a quick turnaround, but I am looking for any like comments that I can bring to them in response to receiving it. Um, I guess personally, just to outline like what I thought of it of this report, I guess is I was quite pleased. I found it um, consistent with WUSA's recommendations uh, as outlined in policy 70. Um, you know, they were, they're looking to take all their holdings out of carbon companies fully by like 2025, which was outlined in their recommendations. Um, I guess the only difference between their report and like sort of the way we've worded things is they don't use the word divestment. Um, it's rather like decarbonizing their portfolio. Um, which I think is just an aim to have more of a holistic approach to it, which I think is okay. I mean, it takes a bit of the symbolism out of divestment out of here, but that I feel like that's kind of the, the angle that they want to take, which I think is okay. Um, yeah, they've acknowledged all the reasons for doing so, financial, ethical, like climate justice reasons um, quite well, which I think was something we wanted to see. Um, and also in our response, like we, we submitted a letter to them a few weeks ago asking for, you know, this to happen and for greater student engagement and consultation on their workings. And the fact that they sent that, this to us for comments was like good. Um, yeah, in, in line with that. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, um, they do want you know any comments so if you have any please bring them forward to me i'm thinking of just writing a, like a a response of appreciation that they have continued to keep us um in the conversation and that uh like it, it, it looks good i guess um but then also acknowledging that we do want to see that continued um and possibly like just a a, a very polite note saying that we are holding them accountable for the recommendations, um, like following up on these recommendations that they've outlined in this report. But I would love to hear what you think. Thanks, Francis. Edward has a direct response. Yeah, um, likewise, I'm very pleased with the report. I'm very glad that they took both approaches, the both financial and kind of the moral obligation, like explicitly stating that as a publicly funded university, their obligation to lead towards a more low carbon economy, I was surprised and pleasantly surprised that they went that route and I'm glad that they did. I'm also glad that they were not looking at carbon offsets to reduce carbon reduction, but more of a holistic approach to making their investments, um, with decarbonizing their investments. So overall pleased. Thanks Edward. Uh, go ahead, Ken. Um, first of all, uh, Francis, thanks for, thanks for doing all this work on that. I just had two questions. 
One was how much of actual power does this group have on the university's actual investment? Like committees can give out whatever reports they want, but other committees could technically just ignore those reports. So do we know what actual things this will kind of lead to? Yeah, so can I speak to that or yeah. do you want Go to ahead. say a question? Okay, um, so yeah, uh, uh, like in within this group is um, a fair few members of the finance and investment committee who would be making those decisions. So I expect that because they have been in support in drafting um, this report that when it goes to the board of governors for a final vote, like these recommendations will be fall. I don't think it has much um, like potential to fail, I guess, if that makes sense. Does that kind of answer your question? Um, yeah, it does. Um, and the second thing was not really a question, more of a request. Can you send me this report in a separate email if possible? I want to forward this sort of endowment fund because we had also reached out to University Diverse, the math endowment fund from carbon intensive investments. Yeah, for sure, I can do that. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. And Canon, I'll say um, as uh, the deputy speaker, you'll get access to the speaker email account where we have that as well. Um, that works too. Thanks, uh, Pat. I guess it doesn't hurt to have uh, it sent more than once. Uh, okay. Uh, so seeing no further uh, discussion on this item, um, Francis, are you comfortable with uh, writing a response on behalf of council or do you uh, do you need any support doing that? Um, I can draft something and I'll probably, uh, yeah, forward it to you first um, before, you know, just to have the extra assurance. I don't want to make um, a response right away from council, but just to have like a, a second person um, to verify. But yes, I'm comfortable doing that. Sure, I have um, Senate tomorrow starting at 3.30, but before that I am free all day, which is actually very surprising. Um, so uh, yeah, feel free to uh, get in touch. I can help you with that. Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, okay, cool. Uh, oh, Edward has requested to speak. Yeah, uh, Ben and Francis, do you want a motion from council to justify your response back, or are you okay with just doing it? If you uh, wish to so move, then uh, that's welcome now. Okay. Um, I move that council authorizes Speaker Easton to draft the response back to the Responsible Investment Working Group based on discussions had at council. Okay, that's seconded by, uh, by staff. Um, uh, do you wish to speak to the motion further, Edward? I think it's self-explanatory. Okay. Uh, Cannon has requested to speak. It worked. Oh, Edward already did what I was going to do. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, so, uh, okay. Uh, does anybody else uh, uh, wish to speak to the motion? Uh, it's pretty clear, I think, just giving uh, for instance, and I grounds to respond to the Responsible Investment Advisory Group. <laughs> That's my error. I've referred to it as working group throughout the agenda. Uh, so seeing no further comments, we'll take that, that motion to a vote. Uh, does anybody oppose the motion as Edward has sent in the chat? Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, that carries unanimously. Uh, and Francis and I will work to uh, get a response to that group tomorrow. Excellent. Okay, now we move to uh, general orders. Before we start general orders, I am going to uh, request a, a ten-minute or a five-minute break just to use the washroom, <laughs> if if that's acceptable. It's not two hours into the meeting, but um, it, this is a convenient time to take a quick pause. Uh, so unless anybody objects, uh, we'll do that. Five minutes, yes. So be back by like 1220 uh, Eastern. 
Okay. Okay, it is 1220. Uh, I will uh, verify that uh, that mic is here. Okay, just waiting for um, Michael to return so we can do some minuting. You there, Michael? I am now, yes. OK, excellent. Uh, so I will bring this meeting back to order at 12.21 PM. Uh, so we are in general orders, the, uh, the, the main part of the meeting. Uh, so 
Uh, the first item is standing committee elections. Uh, I am going to move uh, uh, a privileged motion that council enter committee of the whole uh, for the purposes of conducting committee elections. Uh, can I hear a second to that motion? Canon seconds the motion. Um, so uh, I'll speak to, so committee of the whole is basically a, a tool for Robert's rules where we don't have to minute. Uh, it's more of like a moderated session. The rules of order are a bit relaxed so that we can go through these meetings and use the chat function for the at-large members uh, and uh, kind of It'll, it will speed up this process is, is the hope. Uh, and then when we go through the joint committees of board council, the standing committees of council and the standing committees of board to uh, elect to, we will leave committee of the whole taking a summary of the entire motion voted as a single item. Uh, so hopefully that is that, that's clear to everybody. Um, so I'll remain in the chair uh, for for the purposes of like moderating discussion. Um, and I'll read the first section of motions, uh, whereas the board of directors proposes to strike the students count with the students council a joint committee on governance. And whereas the board of directors has adopted provisional terms of reference for the governance committee, then be it resolved that council suspend procedure 10 J one policies and procedures committee and be it further resolved that council strike with the board of directors a joint committee on governance to assume the responsibilities of the policies and procedures committee and be it further resolved that council accept the provisional governance committee terms of reference and task the governance committee with returning terms of reference for ratification by the end of the spring term and be it further resolved that councilors blank and blank be elected to the governance committee then the last resolution is on a different committee be it further resolved that councillor blank and at large member blank be elected to the budget and appropriations committee so um uh basically uh the reason we're suspending ppc is because we're making a new body between uh uh board and council uh to to look at governance kind of between because it's uh Governance is kind of a shared responsibility of, of our two governing bodies. Um, the terms of reference are uh, basically give uh, give this committee the, the same powers as PPC, um, slightly modifies the membership um, to, uh, to reflect the nature of it being a joint committee of the board and council. Uh, I guess happy to take any questions. Uh, on that motion. Otherwise, we will take nominations for councillors to the governance committee. So feel free to uh, put something in the chat if you wish to speak. Okay, seeing none. <laughs> Vicky. Uh, I would like to nominate myself for the council position on the governance committee. Okay. Um, does anybody else uh, wish to be nominated for the governance committee? Oh, Connor. I nominate myself to be a part of the governance committee. Excellent. Are there any other nominations for uh, for governance committee? If not, then we will take on consensus those two names and fill in the blank. Uh, and again, we're voting. We'll vote on all of this, all of these motions as a single vote, um, just to save time. So, any other nominations for governance committee? Hearing none. Uh, we will put uh, Vicki Econo and uh, Connor Rettinger as the two councillors to be elected to the Governance Committee. Uh, and uh, Michael, hopefully you've got that. Cool. Okay, so next committee is the Budget and Appropriations Committee. Um, 
be it resolved that councillor blank and at large member blank be elected to the budget and appropriations committee are there any councillors who wish to be nominated to the budget and appropriations committee uh, i see sonia Uh, is that a nomination, Sonia? Yes, that's correct. Cool. Are there any other nominations for counselors? Okay. Going once, <laughs> twice. Okay. Uh, so Sonia is the only uh, uh, nominee for the counselor position, so we will uh, put her name in the blank. Uh, next is at large members for BAC. I received um, a few uh, requests from members uh, for BAC. Um, so first is Lamina. Uh, Chowdhury, who I'm not sure if if they're here. Um, actually, if they sent me, I'm just going to double check, but I believe not. OK, so my name is Lamina Chowdhury, uh, and this is my letter of intent for consideration on your budget and appropriations committee. As a third year international student, I am not a stranger to uh, limited budgets and consequent spending, which is why I'm very interested in the opportunity to bring my experience and judgment to the BAC. My role as a food service sales manager for my school's club was an educational experience that guided me towards an efficient operation of my limited funds when I came to the university. For my role, I established a sales team and handled the bureaucratic work when it came to the distribution of charity raised funds. This led me to make thoughtful judgments after examining the revenues and costs to make the best decisions for my clubs, sponsors, and school. Owing to years of personal proficiency in budgeting, I know about the general constraints that students face uh, and tricks to maximize their utility uh, with an uh, aspiring BA in economics and an intended finance specialization. I have given prudential recommendation to my family regarding their finances when I was asked. As a result, the COVID-19 pandemic has not yet affected me or my family brutally in terms of budgeting and appropriation. Given this, I would enthusiastically like to offer my help to make a budget that benefits both the students and the officials of the University of Waterloo. I look forward to conversing with you about my thoughts and the contributions I can make towards the BAC. They give their contact information. Uh, the next I received is Laura Luo, uh, who I believe is present. If you'd like to speak, Laura. Um. Yes. So can you hear me? Yes. Uh, OK. Um, so. Uh, firstly, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Laura Luo, a second year math and CPA student at University of Waterloo, uh, who would like to contribute my efforts to USA as an as large number of the um, budget and appropriations committee, and as well as some other committees like international funding. Um, so first, a little bit more about myself. So. If I am to use three keywords to describe myself, they will be enthusiastic, skillful, and responsible. And with that being said, uh, first allow me to start with my intention of joining as well as why I'm particularly interested in this position. So um, as we all know, USA speaks for the students and is driven by their needs to provide better services. Um, I was one of those who benefited from this program, and now I want to use my professional knowledge to support you, the internal administrators who make the connection with our community happen and who will bring USA to the next level. Um, so I am passionate about this mission you have and becoming a member of the BAC or IFC um, also opens a door for my further development in the, B in the business designation. Um, and it best fits with my ability of budgeting and analyzing yeah. statistical patterns. Um, in terms of qualifications, firstly, I have a strong academic background and I am a fast learner as well. This can be shown with my scholarship awards and other achievements such as the ORMTA scholarship award. And um, I have some recent experiences volunteering at the tax clinic in charge of reporting and filing. And I am very familiar with softwares, for example, Word and Excel to help organize the data. Um, 
Additionally, I am good at teamwork and giving feedbacks. Um, I always have a welcoming attitude towards suggestions and new ideas, and I am always responsible for my duties, which can only be accomplished with, with my great time management skills. Um, in the end of this short presentation of myself, I want to say that I value this opportunity as an amazing challenge and must for grow. And um, lastly, and again, uh, thank you for considering me and can't wait to show you more on the job in the future. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so next uh, for BAC, uh, finally, that I have uh, for those uh, interested in uh, in uh, BAC is, is Grace Wren, who I uh, who is present. And uh, for future, uh, let's try to keep, uh, 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 I guess, presentations, try to keep it under a minute, please. Uh, hi. 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 Uh, can you hear me? Yep. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Grace, and I'm a second year uh, student uh, in math CPA program. And I have previous uh, experience working with uh, budget and uh, budget management. I have been the executive of a uh, high school relay for life finance committee, where I was able to apply my business knowledge to handle the overall finance of the fundraising event. And I successfully led the finance committee members to participate in the budget management, uh, calculate the expenses for the event, and monitor other committee spendings. Uh, moreover, I led the team to create the reimbursement procedures, track the cash flow of the fundraising event, and compile the post-event financial statements. Uh, furthermore, I worked collaboratively with members of our finance committee to collab collect and uh, calculate more than 267,000 donations from 1,000 event participants and actively communicate with other committee leaders to help better achieve a uh, better allocation of the financial resources. And the success of the event has made my school the top relay for life youth school in Canada. So I really want to contribute to the uh, budget and appropriation committee to help um, with budgeting and financial management. Thank you, Grace. Uh, so we have a couple of uh, uh, comments from, from counselors here. Uh, Cannon, go ahead. Um, my question was for Laura. So Laura, yeah, one person cannot sit both on BSC and IFC at the same time. So if given the preference, which one would you prefer to sit on? Um, so for me, I will uh, prefer BAC or IFC, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks both. Uh, Edward? Yeah, I want to ask a question to both candidates who are here. Have you read our budget procedure and how familiar are you with the way we put together its budget each year? Um, I'll uh, let uh, Grace answer first if that's OK, and then we'll go to Laura. Uh, hi. I haven't uh, looked at the budget yet. I, um, I'm not really sure uh, where to find that. Thanks, Grace. Uh, next is Laura. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much the same for me because uh, I think both me and Grace find out this opportunity on the USA website and um, so there's only a general description of um, what the volunteer position is about. Um, and um, I noticed that um, this position highlights uh, we, as the at large number of this committee, we need to be particularly uh, good at uh, looking at patterns and um, uh, giving feedback and suggestions uh, for better improvements. So um, I think um, from my past experiences, I am qualified for this position and would like to help out. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Uh, Jay wish, wishes to speak. Yes, uh, I have a question for both candidates um, who are here. 
Um, thank you for your presentation. It seems you both of you uh, qualify for this position. My question is, this is a one year long commitment. And we all know budgeting is very important for USA as we um, this debate over fees and budgeting things um, in the past few days. My question is, um, are you able to um, have a, like a long term commitment um, on prepare the budget for the USA? Thanks, Jay. Uh, I'll let Laura answer first and then Grace. Um, um, so my answer will be yes. Um, so uh, actually, I have a long term plan of my uh, to manage both my academics and works. Um, so I am taking uh, courses um, in spring part timely and that will. Um, yeah, so like take off some of my stresses for the upcoming terms. Uh, for, for the next academic year. Um, so, I mean, I think I will have the, uh, I will be available for all the activities and commitment needed and uh, stay passionate about um, the on-job duties I have with the BAC committee. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Uh, so, Grace? Uh, hi. So, I would say um, I'm a very dedicated person, and currently I'm a part time student as well. I'm only taking uh, one course this term, so I, I think I have um, time to commit to the committee. And even for a uh, four time study, I think I have a good time management skills where I balance. Um, or my academics and the extracurricular activities. So, um, I think I have the plan uh, uh, for a long-term contribution to the budget and appropriation uh, committee. And uh, I think um, uh, I would like to com commit to the committee uh, for a long time. Thank you, Grace. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to uh, cut off any any further questions there for the sake of time, uh, but thank you both for for giving your statements and answering uh, questions from counselors. Uh, we are going to put into the uh, chat here a uh, a Microsoft form for counselors to vote between uh, uh, the two at large members who have presented themselves. We are scrutinizing the the ballot based on the email address you provide. Is that correct, Mike? Uh, yep. So uh, this is only for counselors to vote. Then there's a POI in chat. Oh, uh, yes, Catherine. Have we confirmed that all candidates are uh, eligible members of LUSA? Pardon, sorry? Have we confirmed that all um, candidates are eligible members of LUSA? Um, I, <laughs> uh, I, I guess I, I've taken them at their word that they are students. Um, Can I? Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, no, I think it was just with regards to um, what one of the at-large members said with regards to being a part-time at well. I think they meant that they're currently situated at well. Um, also, part-time students um, are considered members of USA. Um, Matthew, if that is incorrect, please correct me. Part-time students are members of USA. I can confirm that. I just wanted to confirm in reference to Guelph, um, whether that was University of Guelph or uh, physically located in Guelph. Uh, there's a point of order from Jay. Um, on the voting ballot, why we are going to um, play like two choices since there's only one blank for this position? Mike, go ahead. Um, I just did it. This is my hacked together ranked ballot. So um, you're, if somebody wins on first choice, we won't care about second choice. Um, it's sort of like who would be your first pick? Who would be your second pick? So 
if uh, if somebody does not meet over 50% for the first uh, in first choice, then I'll eliminate one person um, and then we will factor in second choice as well. Uh, and then there's a, a speaking turn from Sonia. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to say that um, I I know Lamina and she's a full time student in Waterloo. I just want to put that out there. Thank you, Sonia. So far, I have nine responses. I'm going to wait a couple minutes to see how many more trickle in, obviously. Okay. I Personally, I have to switch accounts because my WUSA account doesn't have access to the form. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, anybody who is signed in with WUSA, if you want to open up a private browser, um, just to clear cookie sort of thing, uh, that is my recommendation. I'm having issues accessing the form. Ben, are you know. sure you're not connecting by the, via either EDU or ID? It's No, I, I signed out of... It's saying that the site can't be reached. Are you on a... Um, I did it in an incognito tab and it worked. Okay, I will try again then. But also, I suppose, message Mike your choices. That's amenable. Uh, okay, so uh, meantime, uh, I guess while uh, people are finishing the, their ballots there, we can move to uh, the next committee election, uh, uh, which is uh, the Campus Life uh, Advisory Committee. Are there any counselors uh, interested in sitting on the Campus Life Advisory Committee? There are two spaces. Um, I would like to nominate myself and also um, Caroline, she's currently in China, but she also wants to um, apply for this position, so I will also nominate her as well. Okay, um, and sorry, uh, what is your name? Yuhan, Y-U-H-A-N. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, are there any other nominations other than Caroline and Yuhan? Okay, it sounds like there are not. So uh, uh, we will fill in the blanks with uh, Caroline Chen and Yuhan Zhang. Uh, uh, and uh, oh, there's a point of order from Vincent. Yeah, uh, I believe someone, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, Caroline's, Caroline is her preferred name, not her legal name, so that might not match up with what we have on record for the counselor's name. So yeah, I, I, for the agenda, um, her name is like recorded as Caroline, so it should be clear. Um, okay, cool, thanks. But yeah, that's uh, a good a good point to bring up. Um, 
Ben, do you want to officially internal. do you want to officially close the election so I can uh, break open the data to make sure we have all valid votes? Oh yes, sure. Oh, now I'm thinking I probably I don't think I put my email address in. Oh wait, you had to sign in to get to it, so you know automatically. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, we have two counselors for CLAC. Uh, now we have uh, two at-large member positions. I will go through. Uh, uh, we received two uh, at-large. I know of two at-large members who were interested, who contacted me. Um, Abhiraj, who I think is here, maybe, yes. Um, if you'd like to speak to uh, your interest in, in qualifications for the committee in under a minute. Um, sure, thank you, thank you, Ben. Um, so, as I've mentioned in my um, in, in letter of intent, which can be seen here, I have been actively involved in a variety of uh, campus uh, uh, activities. I have been the board assistant of the UW imprint. I'm car the current uh, VPI of MathSoc. I've been a director of MathSoc and of the Math Endowment Fund since fall 2020. Um, I've also been involved in other advocacy uh, uh, advocacy uh, in the form of uh, as the international student representative on the uh, University Committee on Student Mental Health. Um, as an at-large member of the WUSA Committee of Student Safety. So that's there. In addition, uh, I have uh, prior to this meeting, I have taken the time to uh, just go through like the uh, relevant council procedures. So I have seen uh, procedure 25. So I'm aware of the Federation services and like how and like what each of them is supposed to do. And so, yeah, that I think that about covers it. Thank you. Thank you, Abhiraj. Uh, the next name that I have is uh, Pratyusha Varma, who I don't believe is present, um, and I don't believe I received a statement from them. Uh, so I don't know if anybody here uh, knows that individual and would like to speak on their behalf. Um, I guess now is your opportunity to do so. Okay, hearing none. I see in the chat, um, Xian uh, Fan, uh, likes to nominate theirself for uh, the at-large seat. Uh, if you'd like to speak, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I nominate myself for this position, and um, I think personally I'm fit for this position because I actively participate in matters concerning the well-being of students. Like, I'm a computer science representative of um, the math SOC, and I'm currently doing with a matter where there's only limited transfer seats from math, like general math to uh, computer science. And if that's dealt well, I think it will contribute to the long-term prosperity of computer science department and math faculty. And um, for this specific, for this specific, specific position, I am an international student and I am a minority. So I think I will have a more profound understanding of equity and diversity. And I have a personal interest in sociology, so I think I will understand the cultural and social problems and dynamics in this matter well. And I have personally considerably explored the mental health system of the school. And because I entered the school in the year where the pandemic starts, right? I think I understand the best how in this um, incident, the school health system is still operating, like if it's operating well or not. That's um, basically my speech for this. Thank you very much. Thanks, Shan. Uh, are there any other at-large members uh, who are interested in the Campus Life Advisory Committee? Oh, Jay has uh, requested to speak. Yes, I have a question for both candidates, but if there are um, more a large people want to apply. I will wait for my question. Okay, uh, we'll we'll give it a, a second uh, to see if anybody uh, uh, wants to nominate themselves. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can go ahead, Jay. Um, um I've got both candidates. Um, I know Abhijit want to run for um in the by election. Um, are you still going to do that? 
Um, you have been uh, to run I to answer the question. Uh, no, I. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so no, I did intend to run earlier, but uh, given my current appointment as the VP internal, I do not uh, of MathSoc. I do not think I'm going to be contributing time uh, as a uh, like counselor. So I don't plan on running. Thank you. Yeah. Um. um I'm sorry. Jay, okay. did you want to repeat your question for Shan? Sure. Uh, well, you run in the by election in July. Just to for this by election is for that position, like in the committee, right? Uh, no, not in the committee, but like as a counselor, right? That's correct. Okay, yes. so to be honest, I don't even know if that's conflicting with my like current um, election for this um, for this specific job. So can I confirm that? Uh, you. Uh, your intent to run in the future doesn't affect your eligibility now, no. Um, so. Right. I think I would probably run for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Cannon has a direct response. I was just going to say someone running for by-election has no relevance on their appointment to these committees right now. So in sake of time, I think we should move on. Okay. Uh, OK, uh, so we have uh, three nominees for two positions uh, for the at-large membership of uh, the Camp Select Advisory Committee. Uh, so uh, Mike, those names are Pratyusha Varma, uh, Abhiraj Lamba, and uh, Xian Fan. Uh, and once you send me the uh, form for that, I can post it in the chat. And um, I will also announce uh, that uh, Laura Luo has uh, 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 won the spot on the Budget and Appropriations Committee. So congratulations, Laura. Oh, so it's, oh, thank you all. Yeah, so. Um. So you're, you're welcome to hang out and uh, listen to our council meeting if you like. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you all. Uh, and, and thank you, Grace, for your interest. There are still more committees if you're uh, if you're looking to get involved. And I encourage you to um, stick around and and uh, put your name forward. Um, just waiting for the form uh, from from Mike. There it is. Uh, this one is not going to be ranked ballot just because. I I hope there is not a tie for second place among three people. Um, if there is a tie for first, that is fine because we only have two positions to fill among three people. Again, only counselors. Thanks, Mike. There's a point of order from Edward. Yeah, I am ask you, Mike. So wait, just to clarify, the second place of this vote will get the other spot. Well, it's is it? Are there two at-large members available? Two mm -hmm. at-large spots. It's only spots? one. You can only pick uh, one. Sorry about that. No, no, no. But how many available spots are there for at-large members on CLAC? Uh, there are two. Two. Okay. That's why I I didn't bother with a with a second round, just because. I assume among 30, well, no, not 30, among 24 votes and um, three three options that there will not be a tie for second place. Right. I, I, I agree with that. I disagree with the fact that the second place is indicative of who we want as the second position filled on the committee. I think if we end up in situations like 80% and like 12% and 8%, that I don't think is a clear indication of who we want to fill that second seat. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, we'll see what happens 
Unless you guys would like me to conduct this another way, like give everybody more than one vote. I, um, I just don't know how to give people only two votes. Mike, can I suggest that we do it so that the person that we do not want on the committee um, is what we vote and then the person who gets the most vote is the one who does not get the position and then the remaining two are then put mm. to the position. Sure, I can do that. The, um, do you want to wait until what the results read here, or I can trash it can when you, we start? I'll let that be Ben's call. It? But oh, oh. Um, okay, so there's another point of order from Canon. Is it the same as Edwards? Yeah. Okay, Vincent. So this is on how to. So I guess what the issue is, it's like difficult to do the form. The way that I think we usually do this. And MassLock is we do approval voting, so it's multiple choice. Select all candidates that you're okay with winning, and then whoever gets the most votes or the mo or like the top two, if there's two positions, wins. It, I think it's the easiest to administer. Just allow people to select more than one. You can vote for as many people as many candidates as you think are qualified. Okay, so we'll redo the form then. It seems there's okay. like quite a few objections. Um, so I've removed it from chat. Um, yeah, I, I apologize to council because this is definitely a little more uh, administratively taxing uh, in in computer world uh, than than it otherwise would be. We appreciate you, Michael. We do. We do. Thanks, everybody. I should have this up in less than a minute. One sec. Uh, meantime, if you're a counselor interested in running for co-op students council, uh, please type your name in the chat or just say like, yes, CSC or something so that I can just read the message and know what you mean. Um, and we'll see how many we have and if we need to do a forum or not. So for clarification, I'm going to be in instructing select all you're aware of and allowing multiple answers. Sound good? Yes. Thank you. So all are aware, like everyone weren't for were all your all you approve of. OK, Sorry. yeah. Ben, you have a new link. Uh, and at present, we have two counselors nominating themselves for Co-op Students Council. Um, While we're waiting for people to vote, um, can I request that vote counts for all things that for all the committees that we vote for um, be included in the minutes for the meeting? Uh, usually uh, it's it's customary to to destroy ballots um, for committee vote, elections. Vote counts uh, like to destroy ballots. Oh, uh, that's. I mean, usually when we destroy ballots, we lose the vote count with them. So I, that's a good point. Um, I guess if anybody has any. Then yeah, we right. have it's, done. It's fine then. Yeah. It, it has it's not done. It's not impossible. Yeah. If I will say. If it's not an excessive burden. <laughs> I request that. OK, and we can I mean, we, we can get rid of these forms after we've recorded that information. So. Um, Canon. Uh, ben, I'm going to drop off from my side of call and join on Steph's computer. Just letting you know that I'm still at the meeting. OK, understood. Um, 
So we still need uh, uh, one more counselor. Uh, there is room for one more counselor on Co-op Students Council. Um, so uh, I encourage you to, uh, if you're a co-op student and you want to, uh, you know, uh, do some stuff with uh, CSC then, uh, or CEE, sorry. Also, Angela, I see your comment. I will try to remember this when we get to that item. Um, uh, but it appears nobody else is interested in doing uh, Co-op Students Council. So we will fill in two blanks with um, CI. Um, Kunwar, uh, can I ask CIC, do you mean um, like the Co-op Students Council, CSC? Um, are, you a, are you a counselor? Sorry if that's, if that's rude and I should know that. Um, okay, uh, in the absence of a response to, uh, oh, okay, thanks for your comment, that, that works. Um, uh, if there remains an a, a vacancy for the counselor representative and there are like more at-large members interested, then we can fill the counselor spot with an at-large member. I, think uh, as long as council doesn't object um but uh, i guess we'll prefer to fill at large members to at large seats first um but thanks for for clarifying that um okay uh so uh meantime so we have two uh two counselors for the three spaces on csc uh, so uh, that's uh, Edward and Vincent. Uh, so we won't have an election for that. Ben? Yes? I had a one. Can I speak? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so CSC is actually rebranded to CEE Students Council because it also encompasses now experiential education and the EDGE certificate. So our procedures haven't been brought up to date yet, but considering this change in scope, would it be allowed to also allow students who are in the EDGE certificate program to be uh, eligible for this committee? Uh, I have no issue with that. I like. I think being like overly restrictive uh, with, you know, we're, we're, we're in no position to be restrictive about who we send to committees, you know? If you're interested, then uh, then I, there, there's, there's no problem for me. Ben, I can report on who um, the campus life at large students are. Sure. Um, it is Abiraj and Xi'an. Cool. Congratulations, both. Um, OK, so uh, we have so two counselors, uh, Edward and Vincent, for the counselor seats on CEE -E Students Council. <laughs> CSC. Uh, uh, sorry, I shouldn't be. This is serious. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so are there any uh, at large members uh, besides Kunwar who are interested in uh, Co op Students Council? Uh, who are uh, actually, I have a couple here that I, I will read. Um, uh, so first is Naman Sood. Uh, I believe I am a good fit for the committee because as a current co-op student, I have a good idea of the problems that students face. Actually, I'm going to verify if Naman is here and they can speak for themselves. Um, yes, Naman, if you'd like to speak, you can uh, go ahead now. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah. so uh, basically uh, the stuff that I have said there, I am a 2B computer science student. I am in co-op, so I fulfill that minimum requirement of uh, 
knowing the co-op process and uh, knowing the troubles and pains that co-op students go through. Uh, I have been through the co-op process uh, twice at this point, and I'm going through it the third time, uh, which means I have plenty of experience with that. Uh, I feel confident that I can uh, discuss uh, issues relating to co-op and perform constructive discussion on them and you know judge issues by their merit. Uh, I have fulfilled my communications requirements, so I'm good at communication. Uh, and I am familiar with uh, VUSA proceedings because I have uh, been, uh, I have watched uh, council meetings in the past and I have reported on them as a reporter for Math News. So given all of this, I feel like I am uh, sufficiently experienced to uh, fulfill this role. Thank you, Naaman. Uh, so next is Kunmar. So, hi, my name is Kaur, and I'm a first year student working with a computer science. You know, it's my first co-op term, and you know, being a first year co-op student myself, I understand the significance between the connection of students and CE as well as USA. Um, you know, uh, many of my friends either felt really, very shy or felt that their issue wasn't really big enough in order to deserve any individual from CE. So, so I believe that, um, you know, um, by being a member of co-op student council, I can connect with them and understand them better because, you know, I feel that sometimes students feel more connected with other, other students as well because, you know, they, they have um, gone through similar situations and all that stuff. Um, and also by being a member of co-op student council, um, I will have the opportunity to be a part of a wonderful team. And, you know, it would be a, a first-time experience for me uh, as a post school woman. I don't really have much experience uh, in the co-op process because I'm in the first year, but I feel that, uh, you know, I can provide my best for the position. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, finally, uh, the last uh, uh, statement I received uh, from Avtarika Kaur, uh, I have just completed my 1B term in honors arts co-op intending to major in mathematical economics. I am interested in applying for the role of co-op students council, uh, being a co-op student in a university that is famous for its co-op program. I think it would be an unparalleled opportunity to directly collaborate with CEE and the VP education to not only get to know and understand the co-op process in depth, but also contribute to the improvement of the system as a student representative. In the past, I have been elected as head of the Students' Council of my school, and thus I got to know the importance of combining experience of the authorities with the constructive feedback offered by students for the better, betterment of existing projects. Thus, I can confidently vouch that if selected, I can aptly use my skills to contribute my part as a student of this amazing endeavor in the form of being a member of the committee. Uh, so, uh, it being the case, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the, OK, there's a point of inquiry from Connor. Hi, I just remembered that you were saying during the training session that there might be a, an awards and appreciation committee. I don't see that on the agenda. Um, is that? Yes. Um, so the, I had an idea to combine a couple of committees in the student life portfolio, uh, but after discussing with Catherine, we've decided not to do that. So if you're interested, uh, it is IAC that takes on like the WUSA Leadership Awards. Uh, maybe not the Teaching Award, but I can't remember. But if you're interested in that sort of aspect of, of WUSA stuff, then IAC is uh, what I would recommend for you, if that helps. OK, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Connor. Um, OK, so given that there are two spots for uh, at-large members uh, and three for counselors, but we have two counselors and three at-large members uh, interested, uh, without, uh, w uh, if there is no objection from, uh, from council, then I will suggest that we fill in the three blanks with uh, the three uh, nominees we've heard. Uh, so that would be uh, Kunwar, uh, Avtarika and and Naman. Um, so uh, give a chance for people to object if they do. Otherwise, uh, okay, Vicky objects. 
Uh, do you care to uh, elaborate? Uh, I think it's possible that we should do the two counselors that did volunteer, like did nominate themselves, and then maybe do a vote for the at large since the counselors are counselors and it's not all like since it really is. I'm not trying to be like signatory or anything, but since it is for counselors, not at large, but that, there's not enough counselors to fill that. Uh, do a vote for the at-large students. Okay. If sense. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I will move that we suspend procedure uh, uh, procedure 10 committees of council to allow three at-large members to be elected to the co-op students council. Can I hear a second for that motion? Actually, wait, now we're, we're in committee of the whole. Um, I see a second from Edward. This will be added and taken as, from the summary when we leave committee of the whole. So like, we're not actually making the decision now, but like upon leaving, it will be considered like in the in, in the summary because um, you're not supposed to make decisions in uh, committee of the whole. But I think council is likely interested in letting the three at large members interested to sit on this committee. Um, so uh, does anybody wish to speak uh, in favor or against this motion? Edward? Yeah, um, Vicky, I understand your concerns with kind of the representative nature of counselors and how they're elected spots. So those spots are intended for people who are elected as counselors. That said, we have done this in the past. Um, when we've seen at-large students who are more than willing and qualified to sit in communities, we've made exceptions to suspend procedure and make this happen. We've done it for BAC before, so I think there's no problem doing it in this case. Thanks, Edward. Jay? Oh, sorry, actually, Vicky has a direct response. Uh, so Vicky, go first. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. I just didn't fully know because this is just my second governing year. <laughs> I didn't know how these fully worked, uh, even though I had a meeting with Ben. Uh, I guess it was just very confusing. Uh, oh. I thought counselors were counselor seats for committees were mostly just counselors elected. Uh, I was just very confused. No, okay. you're, you are right to question it. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, thanks, Edward and Vicki. Uh, so, um, uh, with Edward's clarification, Vicky, are, do you withdraw your objection? Uh, to, yes, to you do. Yeah, because I was just very confused. Because okay, I, I didn't understand what was no. going on again. No problem. Okay, so we will uh, with with Vicky uh, withdrawing her objection. I, I withdraw the motion, uh, and we will fill the three vacancies uh, with. Uh, the three uh, individuals mentioned earlier. Uh, and we have five names for five spaces on Co-op Students Council or CEE Council or whatever. Uh, okay, next we go to the Education Advisory uh, Council. Uh, are there... Um, uh, so uh, we have three spaces for counselors. I would like to hear uh, nominations. Uh, and Vicky, you have a, a one. And would you like to speak? I would like to nominate myself too. I didn't know if I should put in the chat. I'd already or would. No, this works too. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, Vicky, Rebecca, Jay, and Nia, and Jalisa. Uh, uh, Jalisa, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you're an at-large member. I have you here for. Uh, for later, this is just for counselors at this time. Um, if that works, that's clear. No problem. Uh, okay. So we have three spaces for EAC. I have to check the attendance to see who is who our counselors and who are. Okay. Okay, wow, with a lot of a lot of people interested in EAC, uh, Vicky has a point of inquiry. 
Would this be a conflict of interest depending on what goes forward with the accessibility report and whatever it does with the accessibility? Okay, just making sure. I think sure. not. I think not. Um, okay, so, okay. Uh, okay, so at present we have, uh, I don't know if you're looking at the chat too, Mike. Um, I have Vicky, Rebecca, Jaskaran, Jay, uh, Nea, uh, Vincent, Sonia. Oh, wait, sorry. They, Sonia, not in Nia, sorry. Um, Roseanne. Uh, I think that's all. So that is like six names or seven? Seven, yeah. Okay. Um, Mike, if I can ask you to just go through and uh, through the list of names and have each person give like a 45 second about you, why you want to be on EAC. Sure. Uh, we'll go with Vicky first. So uh, as the person who just did a report or data collecting for the accessibility report, which does include a lot of education pieces. Uh, I feel like I'm qualified uh, as I've had to talk to accessibility services and well, at least my uh, school, and I'd be more than willing to talk to all the other schools too. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, Rebecca? Hi everyone. So I am interested in this position really because of my past advocacy experience. I've been on the ASU, so the Arts Student Union, for the past three years and this past year I was the VP internal. So that really exposed me to a lot of the issues that art students are facing, as well as having had experience on um, council for about a year and a half. And I also think I would be qualified in this role because I have more professional formal policy experience, which the EAC deals with a lot because of my past um, co-op positions. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Jaskaran? Uh, sure. Thanks, Mike. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jaskaran, and essentially why I want to be on EAC for a second term is because um, throughout the past two years, I've been able to contribute significantly to advocacy and preparing evidence for that advocacy through things like the housing report that you uh, that we just uh, voted on, as well as the student transit policy and other initiatives such as the Ontario Undergraduate Student Alliance Conference that was in March. Um, throughout all these roles, I've really been able to hone in on um, evidence-backed um, policy and advocacy. And I think I can really bring that to EAC for a second term um, so that you know, we can advocate on issues that students really care about. Thank you. Thanks, Jasper. Next is Jay. Hi, my name is Jay. I'm Chris. Uh, I would like to talk about my previous experience um, as a counselor at MassSoc um, for the past two terms. Uh, my and a colleague um, successfully talked to the deputy dean of the math faculty to solve the math 137 calculus one problem. That problem is that uh, students cannot go back and forth for the uh, online quizzes. And this is, that is a violation of the faculty policy. And we talked to the deputy dean, and there's no more issue with that. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Uh, is it Nia or Nea? It is Nia. Nia, thank you. Uh, you are next. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi everyone. So the reason why I want to run for the EAC is basically just because I do believe that I do have the critical and analytical thinking skills that are required to be part of the EAC. And also, I've also been um, the first year representative for the University of Waterloo's Economic Society. And currently I am the external affairs and outreach director. So I, I do believe that I am very, really passionate about what the EAC actually does. I'm passionate about education and if given this opportunity i would do my best to um fill the role well thank you thank you Nia. next is vincent hi 
Uh, the type of issues that EAC deals with are why I originally got involved in student government and continued to volunteer my time to the student body through Massac and Musa. I started my work in student government advocating for MEF to divest from fossil fuels and after a year of research and work successfully got MEF to pass a motion in favor of divestment. More recently, I have spent a lot of time advocating against the university violating the rights of students through the use of online proctoring software and the math faculty has seen a lot of success with this as well. Some other priorities on EAC for me will be advocating against costly mandatory textbooks, especially digital textbooks where students don't even get to own the books they pay for after the term ends. As someone who works in cybersecurity, I have a vast knowledge of many of the technical intricacies that have been brought about by the pandemic and hope to take that different perspective to inform the committee on, um, on a lot of the issues that students are facing during online terms and moving forwards. Thanks, Vincent. Uh, Roseanne is the last one. Hi everyone, my name is Roseanne. I'm currently in my 2A term. The reason why, why I wanted to run for EAC is because in the past I have in high school advocated for educational reforms and believe that EAC is a platform for all students to voice their opinions and bring about change. So the main reason I was also uh, encouraged to join the council was I believe the council also believes in bringing student reforms, especially currently due to the pandemic, the educational um, facilities provided, I feel, need to be improved. Hence why I want to run for this position. Thank you. Thanks, Roseanne. Now, just a question, Ben, would you like me to put just the councillor election together or do you want to do the at large and just do it all in one shot? Um, OK, so I think we have uh, we have two. Uh, nominees for at large uh, reps, which would mean that. I think I think it probably makes more sense to just do counselors and then of those who are left over, they can nominate themselves for at large. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, Sounds good. Um, do you want to do select all you approve of type of question again, since we have seven people to fill three spots? Sure. Yeah, if that, uh, I think that was kind of a preference of council, the council based on the uh, last. So uh, we'll see if anybody objects, but it sounds good to me. I can't even remember last year what community elections looked like. <laughs> did it take this long? I think it did. It because always I remember takes this long. doing the minutes for it afterwards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was like 45 minutes. Yeah, and we still have like eight, <laughs> eight general orders after this. <laughs> we love it. Okay. Uh, ben sent you a link. So again, this is uh, select all uh, whom you approve. Ben, by that, do you mean we can do more than three or? Yes. Okay. I just put the th three spots available in there just for context. Um, in the meantime, uh, uh, are there any at-large members present who are interested in uh, uh, sitting on EAC? So I know uh, I have um, Mustafa and Jalisa. I hope I'm saying your name right. Please correct me if I'm not.
Okay, we have a third name, Adrian Frazier. Oh, that's that's right. I did receive your email. I apologize for that, Adrian. Uh, Vicky. So I know it like so I know how the accessibility report got passed and I know recommendation is have like accessibility committee within Lusa. Is, are people going to be assigned to that eventually or what is that happening? I just making sure I know it's all going on. Um, I Steph, go ahead. Hi. Um, yeah, so I still need to uh, come like terms of reference uh, for that group um but it would be like a separate kind of working group um from eac and then my intent would be um i guess to to have some counselors on that but also um some at-large students i'm still trying to figure out um i guess what the appropriate sort of um representation um and like options of students and whatnot are. so i'll probably be bringing that to next council. Thanks, Steph. Um, how are we looking for? Uh, actually, now that we have three uh, members at large interested in EAC, I guess we can uh, like acclaim those and then it'll just be whoever like there won't be extra seats for the the counselors who are unsuccessful at getting on EAC. Um, so th those names are uh, Adrian, uh, Jalisa, and Mustafa. Um, so I guess we can move on then uh, to the Elections and Referenda Committee. Uh, so uh, are there any, so uh, uh, there are four at-large member positions available for Elections and Referenda Committee. Uh, Two of the uh, uh, normally at least two are at large members and counselors can fill the other two. Uh, if you are on this committee, you can't run for election. You can't support uh, any candidates in an election or take a stance on a, like a referenda. Uh, so. Uh, I guess are there any at large members or uh, perhaps senior counselors who are um not intending to return next year who would be interested in sitting on the elections and referenda committee and this is uh we have a by-election coming up soon so uh there are important work to be done okay <laughs> no nominations um um what are you trying to speak no um sorry i'm just typing um mike other names Uh, so I'll, I'll say um, the uh, the th three counselors uh, for EAC are Vincent, Rebecca, and Jasperin. So congratulations to you three. Um, 
Okay, so elections and referenda committee. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna have to nominate some people. Um, um, I nominate, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I nominate Vicky Econo uh, for elections and referenda committee. If, if, she accepts. Um, I nominate uh, Ina Wong. Um, And uh, I nominate uh, Grace Wren and uh, uh, Georgia Berg for elections and referenda committee. Okay. Uh, so uh, Vicky has uh, uh, Vicky has declined. Uh, so there's still one more spot. So right now we have nominees are uh, Ina, Grace, and Georgia. Um, anybody else want to pick random names? We need people to do that. This is a job that needs to be done. Uh, Uh, I nominate uh, Adrian Frazier as the fourth. Adrian, this is for elections and referenda committee. We need uh, four people who are not interested in running for office in the next year. If so, if 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 you do, then uh, you can decline the nomination. You don't have to accept. I'm just we need people, so I'm picking on random names. I nominate um, Mary. I nominate Jasper Ann. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Adrian, do you do you accept? <laughs> Sorry, this is like kind of chaotic, but okay. Uh, Adrian de declines. That's fine. Uh, Jasper also declines. Uh. Yes, Naman, I would I would gratefully take that nomination. Uh, uh, so uh, right now. OK, Ina, even if you're only here for a term, um, we do have a by election this this spring, so that like, it would still be it would still be helpful um, if that changes your mind. <laughs> um so <laughs> i'm forgetting uh i nominated uh grace in georgia but neither of them uh said anything to their nomination so i'm not sure if they like heard them um okay so ina uh, Naaman, uh, Grace accepts, and uh, if if Georgia accepts, then we have four. Um, otherwise, uh, Mary, I, I will take you um, as the fourth nominee. Um, still hearing nothing from uh, Georgia. So I, uh, Mary, if it's okay with you, then I uh, will take you as the fourth nominee for elections and referenda committee. Okay, so that's Mary, Ina, Grace, and uh, Naaman are the, the four. And we have four names. Excellent. Okay. Y you have those, Mike? Cool. Uh, Okay, next is the Internal Administration Committee. Uh, two counselors and two at-large members. 
uh, is are any counselors interested in nominating themselves or nominating others for the internal administration committee? Vicky nominates herself. Yeah. And Connor nominates himself. Are there any other counselors interested? Catherine. Um, I'm nominating uh, Marie for IAC. I'm on her behalf as she can't be here right now. Okay. So that's three names for two positions, uh, which uh, leads us to uh, an election. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay, so uh, we'll start with Catherine, if you can speak on Marie's behalf. Uh, you know, in like four to five seconds or so. Um, yeah, so Marie is a, I believe, health counselor. Um, she was on IAC this past year, um, the whole year. She was really great. Um, I was a committee member alongside her, and she always actively participated in, in conversation um, and brought a lot of uh, really well thought out uh, perspective and experience to the table. Thanks, Catherine. Um, okay, uh, next is Vicky, if you'd like to uh, give a little statement. Hello everyone, I would just like to nominate myself uh, just to get more experience for more of the internal stuff with doing with WUSA, but that's pretty much it. Thanks Vicky. Uh, next is Connor. Hi everybody, um, my name is Connor. I'm running to gain more experience as well as um, just to actively participate now. I really want to try to create a positive impact and try to um, just learn more about um, the internal administration, especially with student services and how we can improve that. Thanks. Thanks, Connor. Uh, okay, so uh, that's three counselors. Uh, Um, thanks, Sonia. Um, we, we took Vicky, Vicky's nomination, but um, appreciate uh, putting names forward. Uh, so for IAC, I have one name that I received for an at-large, uh, an at-large member. Are there any at-large members present who are interested in sitting on IAC, Internal Administration Committee? So that works in the in the student life portfolio. Um, Oversees the WUSA leadership awards uh, and and like clubs and services admin. I think they're doing part of the services review. Uh, hi, William. We did uh, uh, we we did elect um, members to the the co-op students council already, um, and there's a point of inquiry from Connor. Since there's two or three counselors running for two positions and there's only one at large position available for IAC, um, could the third counselor that doesn't get elected on behalf of the council run for the at large position or just be elected into the at large position? Yeah, that that would be. Um, uh, William, I, I did and uh, unfortunately uh, did not get the the CSC position and there's a point of order from Canon. Sorry, I was kind of confused by what Connor was asking. Is he asking the counselor who didn't doesn't get elected to the seat can get elected to the at large seat? I, I think he's suggesting that there are four spots, two at large, two counselors. There are three counselors interested and one at large interested to give all four interested to the four spots, um, okay. regardless of their other position. Um, I think. Uh, uh, so, uh, are there if there are any other at large members interested in IAC? I guess uh, now is your chance. Otherwise, we will take the four names interested and fill them in the four spots. Okay. Uh, hearing none. Uh, we will fill the four vacancies on IAC with uh, Vicky, Connor, 
uh, Marie uh, and Jatashri, uh, the at large member. Uh, so cool. Okay, next is IFC, Internal Funding Committee. Uh, so there are three counselor positions and two uh, at large positions. Uh, so Nuer uh, has uh, nominated himself for IFC. Angela uh, self nominated uh, for IFC. Uh, Jay nominates himself for IFC. And Sahil uh, also nominates for IFC. And Sahil, you're a count, like a constituency society rep, if that's right. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and I see uh, Mustafa for IFC as well. Um, and and uh, for your information, Mustafa, you were successful for EAC. Um, I think you joined after we did that. Um, yes. Sorry, Benjamin. Thank you. No, no, no problem. Um, okay. Wow. Lots of interest in IFC. Okay. So we have uh, Nuer, Sahil, Angela, Jay. And those are the names. So that's four names. Am I, sorry, I'm like kind of losing it. <laughs> sorry, I have those four so far. I am. Uh, oh, I have Mustafa. So, Nuer, Sahil, Angela, Jay, Mustafa. Unless Mustafa wanted to. Mustafa's at large. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, those four are all I have. Did I miss anybody? I don't. Th th that's not... those are the four I have as well. So that's okay. again five names for five positions. Although there, so we have more, one more counselor and one fewer at large member. Um, uh, if anybody has any comment or uh, anything to add, we can take those five names to fill those five spots. Um, Edward, I see it. Looks like you're unmuting. I don't know if you. Oh, Kelvin. Oh. No, I didn't. I did not. Thank you for catching that, Edward. I did not catch Calvin. Uh, it, are you, is Calvin present? No, but I can speak on his behalf. Um, he's also an at-large member. Uh, okay, so. Uh, okay, uh, well, in it may not be necessary because we have two at-large members um, interested, so. Uh, like those two will just fill those two spots and then there will be a competition between the counselors. Um, so we will take Kelvin and Mustafa for the two at large members of IFC. Um, uh, so yeah, that's Kelvin Mustafa. Uh, and then we have four counselors for three positions, uh, which are uh, Sahil, Nuer, uh, Jay and Angela, those are the four. Filling in an election now. Cool, okay. We're getting there, people. Um, in in the meantime, uh, are any counselors interested in the space on the planning student spaces and works committee uh, and or at large members? If if either, uh, if you can just say like PSWC council, PSWC at large, uh, just so I can for easy reference for me in the chat and I will post here. Uh, the IFC election. Uh, 
Um, and Angela, is that a, a yes to PSWC Council? Oh, OK, thank you, Angela. Uh, we we didn't. Oh, yeah, we should. Crap. OK, uh, we didn't do uh, 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 give counselors an opportunity to speak to their qualifications. That's. Uh, um, OK, so we're going to have to. Uh, I can read you one. Yeah, I apologize. Um, OK, so sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, Angela, if you'd like to go first for IFC. Um. Sure, no problem. Wait, I'll quickly like, turn my camera on, I guess. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Angela. I'm a um, biomedical engineering student in my third year. I've completed my three-year term. I'm currently on co-op. Um, I was in IFC last year. Um, I got to learn a lot about um, how a lot of the slot funds are allocated towards, like, lots of different projects that many students are undertaking, which was really awesome and interesting. Um, I really enjoyed learning a lot about that sort of aspect. I never really had much like, I guess, like financial experience before. So definitely my year on the IFC has taught me a lot and I definitely enjoyed being able to participate and be part of that sort of like group that would help a whole bunch of other students um, in a monetary way. So I would hope to continue that this year. Thanks. Thanks, Angela. Uh, so uh, next, uh, we'll say Jay. Hi, um, I'm relatively relative new to internal funding committee, but this is quite relevant to my study as a math and business double degree student. Um, one of my advocacy um, is also related uh, for financial transparency um, in USA. Uh, if I sit on the internal funding committee, I will make sure the budget and uh, um, financial transparency is open to everyone. Thanks, Jay. Uh, next uh, is Nuer. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yep. Yeah, so I'm a student in accounting and financial management. So finance and accounting and budgeting is something that I not only have somewhat of an experience in, is also something that I'm passionate and interested about. So I look forward to administrating and managing the funds of USA, such as the Student Life Endowment Fund, and ensuring that the funds are allocated in a way that benefits uh, students correctly and that they um, can be used to benefit us all in the future. Thank you. Uh, and uh, finally is Sahil. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, so I'm also in accounting and financial management and like Nuware, I've been exposed to funding and budgeting as well. And I know that the internal funding committee, uh, one of the funds that the committee administers is the Enterprise Opportunity and Innovation Fund. And so I've actually been part of similar uh, committees like this, both domestically and internationally for both virtual and in-person camps where we gave opportunities to students, whether they be in elementary school or high school, um, to uh, tell us about their projects uh, for us to fund them. And we've actually come across a lot of cool projects that we gave funding to for them to excel in their studies uh, for that specific project. And so I would say that I'm well fit for that, for this committee particularly because of the exposure I've been given. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we all have the same idea to further students' education, not just academically, but within their own interests as well. Thanks. Uh, okay, so sending the new link uh, after having done statements. Apologies for that one. I guess I'll remove this last one. Uh, Um, meantime, uh, we have two nominations for PSWC Council. Are there any at-large members interested in uh, the Planning Student Spaces and Works Committee? Uh, 
Um, so I guess for context, uh, Planning Student Spaces and Works is a committee of board that helps to administer our, our capital program fund, um, which actually is going to have a lot of work to do this year with the SLC PAC expansion set to open soon. Uh, those are like famous last words, but uh, there's a point of inquiry from Vicky. If, if there is no other uh, people like who nominate, like either for at large or well, I mean, I'd like me a dash credit for council that does is it just assumed that like us to dash credit and i get those position or is it more different uh no if 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 you two are the only ones uh interested then it'll be you two who filled the, the two spots um which i i guess given that uh we're hearing no more uh nominations for planning student spaces and works uh we will take those acclamations for vicky and jasperin um there's a point of order from edward yes ben could you clarify what happened with the co-op student council elections i want who was who were the names nominated to the positions and who were the list of candidates i think i may have uh, may have forgotten to include William's statement, actually, that, that you bring that up. Right. So we might uh, have to re maybe we should redo that. Yeah. Point of order that we should probably redo that election. Yeah. I apologize for that. It's it's kind of uh, an imperfect system where I have like an inbox and I, anyway, it's so I, I do apologize for that. Thank you for raising that point of order, order Edward. Um, um, so maybe we'll wait for uh, the IFC election to finish, then we'll go back to Co-op Students Council uh, and finish. And I do have a a written statement from William um, that I'll read this time. Um, somewhere. Um, okay, so how is the IFC vote looking, Mike? I've sent you the names on Teams. Uh, it is oh. pretty, pretty much wrapped up with as many people who can vote have. Okay, uh, so the uh, winners for that election were Nuer, Sahil, and Angela. So congratulations to you three. Uh, and uh, planning student spaces and works uh, will be filled with Vicky and Jaskarin, uh, and we go back to Co-op Students Council um, because of my earlier error. Um, so, Mike, can you refresh my memory on what happened there? Um, I think we just did acclamations for the at-large because we only had three. So I have it um, sorry, my notes. Or wasn't there one vacancy? Like there were four at large, and we put one of them into the uh, councilor seats. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So well, okay. Let me see. So we'll hold them out for five across four spots. No, it was it was three. Oh yeah, we swapped one for councilor. So what we should do is there are four vacancies and five names. Um, and hopefully those individuals have stuck around to give their statements again, um, if that is like what we should do. I see Naman's here. Um, Who's Naman? Uh, Kanwar. left. Avtarkva. Um, OK, 
Okay. Um, uh, Rebecca wishes to speak. Yeah, I was just wondering if maybe in the interest of fairness, just um, reelecting the one seat that we filled in, like kind of with the with the I forget if it was with the counter or with at large individual, but since the other two people already got elected, I don't know if that would like be in their best interest to like do another election. I'm OK either way, but I just thought I would raise the point. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the fair, unfortunately, I kind of dropped the ball on this and now people who had given statements have left. So I think the, I think the fairest way to do this is to just reelect all the at large student positions like across the four vacancies. Uh, so there's like three at, three at large students in one council vacancy and there are five names. Uh, and I just reelect all, you know, like pick the top four of those five. Um, Canon has a direct response. Um, I'm not sure if every one of the people who were there here at that time are here anymore. Another thing we could do is suspend procedure and expand the council by one person. We have done that in the past, and I think that seems to be one of the fairest things we can do right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm fine with that. Uh, there's a direct response from Edward. Yeah, I am 100% in favor of what Ken suggested. Um, Co-op's council, or C-Soon's council, typically does not take binding votes on anything. It's more of a consultation committee, so there's no balance of power or anything like that we need to be too concerned about right now. Uh, Steph? Yeah, I just wanted to give my, I guess, consent, given that this uh, committee is underneath me, my portfolio. Okay, thanks, Steph. Um, okay, so uh, we will take a motion uh, by consensus, uh, be it resolved that um, Students Council suspends uh, Procedure 10, uh, Committees of Council to uh, increase the membership of Co-op Students Council by one at-large member uh, to elect William Tang. William Tang is that his name? Um, yeah. To uh, to Co-op Students Council, something like that. Um, and I will write him an email apologizing. Um, that doesn't have to be in the motion. Uh, uh, okay. So. Uh, OK, so uh, I will uh, move that we leave. Oh, thanks, Harleen. We'll note that um, you're stepping out at this time. Uh, 2D, is that you want to speak, Canon? There was more about seconding your leaving the committee as a whole thing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. So be it resolved that uh, uh, council uh, leave committee of the whole, taking with it the names of uh, students elected to committees. Uh, or whatever, just like filling in the blanks above and adopting the whole resolution. Um, and Canon seconds. Good, Mike. Yep. Cool. Do um, you want me to read through the names all together or? Yeah, sure. For clarity. We will go in order, starting with governance committee. Sound good? Okay. Governance, I have Vicky and Connor as the counselors. They were acclaimed. Um, sorry, um, BAC, I have Sonia as the acclaimed counselor and Laura won the election there for the at-large. Good, good. Uh, for campus life, Caroline Chen and Yuhan Zhang um, were the counselors acclaimed. And the at-large elected 
were Abiraj and Xi'an. Um, for uh, Cooperative Education and Experiential Students Council, um, Edward and Vincent took two of the uh, counselor spots and then it was expanded to include uh, Neyman, uh, Kunwar, Af Tarikva, and William Tang. Uh, EAC was an election among seven counselors uh, for three spots, and those counselors who won are Rebecca, Jaskaran, and Vincent. Uh, the at-large spots on EAC, of which there are three, went to Mustafa, Jalisa, and Adrian. Um, elections and referenda committee was the next one we had, and that went to Ina, Grace, Neyman, and Mary. Um, IAC came next, and the acclaimed counselors were Vicky and Connor. Uh, go ahead, Ina. I actually don't recognize that because, Ina, you're not a member of council. Uh, sorry to, if that's kind of a mean thing to say, but like, it, can you bring it up with like, uh, okay, Steph, point of privilege. Um, yeah, um, you know, would just like her name to be Yi Chen. Um, Thank you. For okay. the, the record on the thing. It's Y-U-Q-I-A-N, right? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Um, and IAC, um, yes, was Vicky and Connor in the counselor spots, and then the at-large spot, one went to counselor uh, Marie, and the other one went to at-large uh, Jatashri. Um, internal funding committee uh, went to the counselors uh, Nuer, Sahil, and Angela, and the at-large members uh, were Kelvin and Mustafa. We're rounding the gate, everybody. Uh, PSWC, um, the counselor uh, went, spot went to Vicky. Well, and the other spot went to Jaskarin. It's arbitrary which one went to who. It was just two blanks. Okay. So that is the resolution that we are voting on. Uh, does anybody oppose adopting uh, that uh, summary of business conducted in Committee of the Whole? Does anybody wish to abstain? Do you have a second for this, Ben? Uh, there, I think there was a second long ago. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. I think it might be canon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, like two hours ago almost. Uh, okay, uh, so does anybody oppose the motion? Does anybody wish to abstain? Should people who are elected to a committee be abstaining? No, because you're allowed to vote for yourself. Okay. Um, uh, uh, so does anybody uh, wish to abstain? Hearing neither, that carries unanimously. And we have commit, uh, uh, elected a bunch of people to committees. That's a, that's a big item. So thanks for your patience and sticking around. Um, OK, next is approval of by-election dates for spring 2021. So I'll just say uh, we're, we're back in uh, regular session. We're out of committee the whole. So chat will now be for twos, ones, points of order, in, inquiry, privilege, et cetera. Um, so we're back to more formal rules of order. Uh, next is the approval of by-election dates for spring 21. Be it resolved that the Students' Council approve the following timeline for spring 2021 by elections. 6th of July, nominations open. 12th of July, nominations close in an all-candidates meeting. Uh, 15 July, campaigning begins. 19 July, voting begins. 21st July, voting and campaigning ends. Uh, I move this. Canon seconds. Uh, this is uh, 
but this was prepared with the advice of uh, our uh, uh, our director of marketing and communications, who uh, is a superstar, but also uh, reviewed uh, reviewed uh, the elections and referenda uh, committee uh, the elections and referenda procedures uh, to make sure that this is all kosher. Um, and the sooner we get this information to our staff, the sooner we can start promoting the by-election uh, and fill the vacancies and get some good engaged student government. Uh, so does anybody have any questions? Vicki? Uh, so this might be not a great exception, but just assuming that people got like for reticent because I did want to run for the counselor. And if I can't get enough nominations, then it's still going to remain vacant. And then I don't know really if anyone will ever show interest. So I, I was wondering if there's any, because I know for reticent, it has to be registered, registered, registered students. So, yeah. Um, if, so like, let's say you ran for, uh, you put your name forward and sought nominations, you didn't get enough. You could continue to serve as a like pro tempor designate uh, if Rask continues to appoint you. Um, okay. um, but hopefully we can uh, get some students involved. Uh, Jay. Yeah, because um, this is a whole, this is a concern I already have for like for next motion, but um, I already struck down for next meeting. So. Um, I would like to work with president if we can get some data. Let's see, like how many students um, didn't meet the requirement, and probably we can lower the um, number of required uh, nomination tickets for the by election. But that's something I will work on for the next Thanks, meeting. Jay. Yeah, and I, I did see your email. I didn't get a chance to respond. Um, it was a, it's, as you can understand, it's a, yes. I've already had some trouble coordinating my inbox, but uh, definitely interested to work with you on that. Uh, and that information should be pretty easily available um, to, to see how many people fail at uh, getting the proper number of nominations. And, um, uh, uh, and we can, uh, I guess if, if something comes to council next meeting, then it could be done before the by-election, but I guess it will be like it, we'll have to work on it pretty quickly, I guess is all I'll say. Um, and uh, there's also a process, like usually we do uh, policy and procedure changes in multiple readings, um, which can be suspended. So if council thinks it's a really important issue, we can do it in one meeting, but it may, Depending on the appetite for uh, of council, uh, it may be possible to do this before the by election, or it might have to wait till after. But we can definitely. I'm happy to meet with you to just to discuss that, Jay. Okay, thanks for the info. All right. Uh, any other questions on approving the by election dates? Seeing none. Does anybody oppose the motion as presented? Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, this carries unanimously. Uh, and we have by-election dates for the spring term. Okay, next is meeting dates for spring 2021. Uh, so be it resolved that the Students' Council hold its regular meetings at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on blank June, blank July, and blank August 2021. Uh, I guess, uh, we should we should not hold a meeting during campaigning. So uh, let me get my calendar. Um, July twenty fifth would be the only day then Ben for July. Okay, because you we shouldn't do it during nominations either. So uh, anytime as soon as an election, actually we can do it during nomination period if you want to, uh, just during the voting period we can't. Yeah, so that leaves us the 11th or the 25th, that's right. Um, uh, uh, sorry, okay. Um, okay, Vicky, you already spoke, JR. Okay, so we're at 
Catherine with a speaking turn. Go ahead, Catherine. Yo, can we table this to the end of the meeting so that you can come with uh, dates to fill the blank for approval? I think we can do this pretty quickly now. Like, OK. Um, uh, I mean, uh, you're welcome to 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 uh, actually no, we, we, we approved the agenda already, so we can't move this. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, Mary asked, uh, what about Saturdays? Um, there's a. I guess it, it's a tradition, I guess, to hold uh, meetings on Sundays. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to pick a good day. Um, I was also going to say, sorry, um, some countries Saturdays are work days. So they don't have a five day week work week, so it might be better to do them on Sunday only. OK, um, so I will propose the following dates. Um, uh, so the 13th of June, the 11th of July, and the 15th of August. Um, ben, the 15th of August might be falling during exam period. Okay. I'm not um, really sure so the exact exam period. Yes, that's the final day of exam period. Okay, what about the first of, uh, that might be long weekend, first of August. Uh, yeah, so the end of August. The exam period runs from the 7th to the 15th at least. Okay. Um, does anybody know what day the civic holiday is? <laughs> it should be the first weekend of August, so I'm, I believe it would be Monday, August 2nd, so I think our only options would be um, August 22nd or 29th. OK. Um, let's do the, the second. The 22nd? Yeah, because orientation starts on 30th, and I know some of the councils are enrolled in orientation, and there's pre stuff that happens before that. OK. So we will do the 13th of June, the 11th of July, and the 22nd of August at 10.30 a.m.? Yes, yep. Okay, uh, I'll give anybody an opportunity to object or uh, to uh, propose alternate dates. Otherwise, we will uh, fill in the blank with those dates um, as, I guess, a privileged motion. I don't know. I am kind of being a little fast and loose with the rules here. Um, uh, Okay, uh, Vincent. Yeah, so just to clarify, I think we can't have a meeting during the election. It's fine to have a meeting during the nominations period. I think that is fair to say, yeah, because I mean, like the nomination period for exec lasted like months. So right, okay, I'm fine with this. Um, then. Thanks, Vincent. Okay, so Canon seconds uh, filling in the blanks with the 13th, the 11th, and the 22nd, respectively. Um. Uh. Okay, I, I don't even think you have to have to vote on that. I think a second is sufficient. Um, Rebecca? Actually, sorry, there's a point of inquiry from Vicky. Uh, before we get to, I guess, uh, so the point five, after Rebecca, could we have a five minute recess? Um, yes, we can. Um, we'll go to Rebecca. Hi, I was just curious about the time. So is it like 1030 to like 4.30, is that like consistently going to be the time slot that we have council on? Or is that something that can be like moved around? Um, the, t the start time will be consistent. The length depends on the agenda for the meeting. This is, I would say this is like an extraordinarily long meeting. Um, so like usually I feel like 10.30 to like 2.30 is a better approximate. Um, here we're gonna probably go over, but you, um, I would say like an average length of like three hours, if I were to estimate. That helps. But it really depends on 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 the agenda for any given meeting. This is a lot of administrative stuff that usually we don't do. 
Um, point of inquiry from Roseanne. Um, I want to know if we miss meetings, who do we inform? Like if we have other commitments on the day of the meeting? You send regrets to speaker at wusa.ca. Okay, fine. thank you. Um, no problem. That's a good question. Uh, okay, so at present we have the 13th, the 11th, and the 22nd of August. Um, uh, so I'm going to take that to a vote. Does anybody oppose the motion? Be it resolved that the Students Council hold its regular meetings at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the 13th of June, the 11th of July, and the 22nd of August, 2021. Does anybody oppose? Does anybody wish to abstain? Hearing neither, that carries unanimously. We have meeting dates for the rest of the spring term. Uh, 7.4 was withdrawn uh, at the beginning. Uh, next is item 7.5, ratification of new WUSA fee model. Whereas the board of directors has approved a return to a mandatory fee. Oh, sorry, we did say we would do a five minute recess, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, okay, so please be back at your computers uh, at 2.23. Uh, Eastern, so I don't know, five minutes. <laughs> also, Ben, for this part, do you think it's better to have a live agenda to hold the speaking order? Can you repeat, sorry? What do you think, like, for, because I'm assuming a lot of people are going to be speaking on this, would it be better to, like, have, you know how, do, when we have live agendas or live minutes or whatever, and we can have, like, speaking orders in there so people know when their turn is? Oh, sure. Um, I can throw uh, that together if you to... want. Then. Yeah, I, I guess uh, Canon or, or Mike, if you can do that, like. Uh, um, I guess I don't if either of you are OK with doing that, then that works for me. If I if I send it to you, do you want to share your screen or do you want if Connor is available and willing, we can also bring him in. Um, if you share the document with me, like I can put it on my screen if somebody else is like typing in it and it'll show up on my screen, I imagine. Um, just put it next to the agenda. Sure. Thanks. I am going to step away for a second here. Um, Mike, when you make the uh, live agenda, can you put Matthew at the beginning down for giving a presentation and then. I'm not giving a oh, OK. Matthew at the beginning for speaking in favor. <laughs> okay, take it back. Not as like a presentation, but can you put Matthew down first and then me second as um, like sponsors of the motion to speak to it? Sure. Thanks. I'd like to go third. That was Vincent Macri. I know his voice by now. He's a... Uh... He's a fair fellow. <laughs> He's a regular. Um, Catherine, thank you. are you? Would you say that you are second on it? We'll wait until that's official, probably when we come back. But it's safe to assume. Yes, please. Okay. Mike, could you also send me the link for that so I can start start keeping track of the speaking order? Sure, yeah. Canon, I've sent it to your U Waterloo address. Yeah, that works. Um, if it is on a WUSA SharePoint, so if you cannot access, let me know, but I've tried to set it up such that you can.
I can't access. Um, Jay, we are currently in a break, so there isn't no POIs right now. You can just speak right now if you want. Okay. Um, if students want to join the meeting now, can I share the link to them or have to email the speaker at USA to get the link? I would leave that for Ben to figure out as a speaker. So I would say wait for him before doing that. Mike, I still cannot access it. Working. Hi, everybody. Um, I heard my name. What's up? Or actually, I guess I should call this back to order. Um, um, Jay was asking that if he, if other people, uh, if at large members want to join the meeting now, can he share the link directly or should he ask them to email the speaker? Uh, Um, I mean, it's a public meeting, so you can share it, but um, I guess just uh, oh. remind them like the, to observe the, the rules of order uh, and that they'll require sponsorship uh, from a counselor to speak. Um, can you recommend that the link only be shared directly with people and not posted publicly? Just to avoid. Oh, no. Yeah, just a person. Uh, Canon, check your Facebook Messenger. I have sent you the link for edit access. Let me know if that works. Um, if you send me that link too, I can put it up on the second half of my screen here. Uh, you have uh, check Ben, check your WUSA president email. Uh, it should be there. I, I had to create a workaround for Canon just because okay. um, allowing WUSA stuff. Canon, let me know if it worked. Um. Okay, um, and to be clear, somebody else is going to maintain the speaking list. It will be me if I can get access, and it doesn't seem like I am able to get access. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can just get a Google form, uh, not Google form, a Google sheet, and do it on my side. Ben, if you're okay, and I'll share that with you. Sure. Um, where will you share that link, Canon? I will just send it to you on Messenger if that works. Yep, that's good. <sighs> Let me know if it works for you now. Yep, I see. And I'll just copy the motion text. I have the motion up already, so like. OK, perfect. Um, yeah, if this is, we can just do like a speaking order here. Um, also, folks, please do not laugh when I mistype things because I'm using a new keyboard and my hands have not set up on that keyboard yet. <laughs> OK, very well. Uh, I will call us back to order at 2.26 uh, PM. Uh, here we have a motion. Uh, whereas the Board of Directors has approved a return to a mandatory fee model in light of legal challenges to the Student Choice Initiative, then be it resolved that the Students Council ratify the following changes to the WUSA fees for fiscal year 2022. Student life, $35, including community building services, clubs funding, health and safety, and events fees. 
academic support and advocacy, $15.39, including academic support, university advocacy, and government advocacy fees. Operations, $29.58. Orientation fee, $117.17. Student refugee program, $5.01. Capital program fund, $15.11. Be it further resolved that should the student choice initiative come back into force, the WUSA fees return to the ex uh, existing optional framework, readjusting for increases to the consumer price index. This is submitted by Vice President Schwartz, who I will take to move. Can I hear a second? Um, VP Dong seconds. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, Matthew, please go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, this is sort of an item that's been brought up. Um, I can give a little bit of background on this item for especially our new counselors. Um, this was something that came to the Budget and Appropriations Committee last year um, during the last governing year, and they approved this change, passed it to the board. Um, board approved it and it's now passed the council, so it's sort of doing the circuit of approvals. Um, initially, I was kind of skeptical of the, of the idea as well, but after reading into a lot of the background and the reasoning behind this, I think it is definitely the best path forward for students. Um, and we weigh in on what allows WUSA to offer the best value for money um, while supporting all the um, essential services and things that students ask us to support. Uh, so I've chatted with a lot of students and a lot of counselors about their concerns about this over the past few days and different perspectives and different ideas. Uh, so I've got a big, bit of a bank of knowledge now um, about the different ways that this is going to impact our student body and what it's going to help, what it's going to do, what it's going to affect. Uh, so I'm very happy to answer any questions on it. Um, I can also give a, a very brief talk about uh, sort of why this change is being made for um, uh, to sort of um, change how WUSA's fees operate. Um, it works a couple in a couple different ways because of the different ways that uh, some of these fees affect WUSA's operations. Uh, for some of these fees, such as our advocacy fees, um, we suffer from what's very commonly called the free rider problem, which is um, a very common issue where you have a service like advocacy, where when one student opts out or many students opt out, it doesn't change how much advocacy costs. And you can't just decide to not advocate for opted out students and advocate for opted in students. So what we had to do, we were forced by um, the student choice initiative that was implemented and then struck down for being unconstitutional was to raise the fee to be artificially high so that because and that required students that did opt in to pay for the advocacy for students that opted out which the budget appropriations committee at the time which was uh, almost entirely comprised of counselors felt was grossly unfair other parts of this uh, change affect how um, it's very very difficult for WUSA to police services and how spending student money on bouncers to kick people out of events um, and trying to police our hundreds of clubs and thousands of club members um, just isn't feasible and is a broad waste of student money. Um, so when value for money is one of the things that I ran on, that was something that really appealed to me um, as being a sort of point of interest here and something that is essential to serving. Um, so broadly, these fees touch a number of things. There's also the affordability aspect whereby making them mandatory, we're able to decrease fees because of efficiencies in now how operations work. Um, we are also able to not have to charge taxes on those fees, which means that our students are able to access our services, the same services or even better services than we had before, which is what we're aiming for uh, at still a lower cost. And then in the terms of uh, lower income students, we're able to support lower income students because when fees are mandatory, you can apply them to student aid. Um, in my opinion, you should not be restricted by what activities you can get involved with and what your student life looks like because of your fiscal and financial background. So the fact that by making them mandatory means that students that are in low income positions can't get their um, student fees funded by OSAP or other student aid um, services. To me, that is a very clear point about how we have to um, serve all of our students, um, no matter what their backgrounds are, so everyone can get involved in our campus in their maximum capacity. So uh, that's broadly the pitch about uh, why this change was made, although there's a lot of details I'm very happy to get into if anyone has any questions. Um, I think this is going to be a very good thing for students. Thanks, Matthew. There, OK, there are a couple of things going on in the chat. Uh, seconders do not get speaking rights to go second. So Catherine will speak after Cannon, who requested a speaking turn first. Um, to at-large members present, uh, I ask you 